Um, French always going to be really, really scary uh, because you always have to be aware of your base and like be aware of where the knights from your, from the enemy French player is going. So you always need a couple of spearmen in your base just to defend it because French knights, they take down villagers in just two hits. They charge in, they hit them once, villager is dead. So you always need spears like in your wood line and or when you're gathering um, food outside, you need either like outposts or, or spearmen there. We're going to be seeing what our players are going to be going for here as we're just about to begin. Game number one has just started. Team Louis Metal and uh, what did you say? No, Wait, it, it, it's Louis Yui. I allow Louis Yui in this one. Like it's my rare exception to the half half because it's too good not to. So Louis Yui versus. I'm happy to go with Blam. Good old Blam. I don't All know right, what you want so to do. With Yui the Louis and Blam. <laughs> Blam five five five. Wait, five, no, no, oh, no. One. I figured it out. It's quite simply Wham five 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 five. <laughs> Oh, but it should be a good Blade one. I mean, one. This is NA versus, like, China, right? Yeah. You know, NA's pride versus, honestly, I'd, I'd say, like, arguably the, the two best Chinese players in the scene right now. I'm trying to think if there's anyone that, that overtakes them. Definitely not in the 1v1 charts, right? These are the top, top. Um, we talked earlier about CSO as a potential contender in the team environment and actually could have easily been someone we would have expected to see in this team. Definitely would have been there if this was a free, free tournament. Yeah, I think so as well. Now, early differences that we see so far. One civilization having the English here. Men at Arms out on the field. And Men at Arms can be really, really strong here. We see Wham hasn't gathered a lot of gold so far. That Men at Arms is already halfway across the map. This could be very, very hard here for Wham to uh, get into Feudal Age and then make Knights. Problematic. Especially when we look at where the spawn of gold is, right? Like, it looks like it's... At least to the backside, so it should slow down the assault a little bit. But the key is whether you scout this out. And the problem is, right, on a map like this, especially with the sieves they're playing, you need to get a bunch of sheep together. So you're probably not dying towards your opponent to see what they're doing. You're just looking to sheep up in the interim. Yeah, at the same time, it's... Like, look at that. It's so much distance between the gold and the TC. It's not even, like... The English player doesn't even have to be careful about where he puts his men at arms there. <laughs> you can just mark them right there, and there we go. Back gold, the very likely to be denied. Look at that. He he won't be able to age up to feudal age. He needs to oh, send his man. villagers out somewhere. It's two men arms now, so you can't you can't even walk new villagers out here with fresh health. It's not going to cut it. Like what are we out? Is that one eighty total? Like even if he has to come out for ten, it's going to cost you two at least. Yeah, and he's sending three more villagers uh, in order to get the last remaining bit of gold that he needs. I mean, if your opponent instantly reacts, I think you're screwed here, right? Yep. He's not going to be able to peel back, so he's going to lose one. He doesn't even he's get the drop off. Oh, no. I mean, I oh, think that's God. seven on the other villager. Yeah, this hurts so, so, so bad right now. Refund. Two. Oh, God. Yeah, he needs to go somewhere else right now. Mate, someone didn't right get now. Amazon Prime ship and delivery right there. Now, that is grim. I, I don't know how you're meant to get gold. His only option is to go away from his base towards the mid-neutral golds between him and his teammate. And behind that, I mean... Yui Metal, he's almost half, like he's halfway there with his gold of cavalry. Mm -hmm. And Wham's gold is incredibly exposed right now. And we've seen that just, you know, two, one, two night advantage. It completely changes the dynamic of the game in, in French mirrors. And I think we're definitely going to be seeing that here. Oh, I yeah, that. Now, the from Blade, they didn't achieve a lot so far. Okay, there we go. Okay. School of cavalry now coming out. Actually, not the worst timing, considering uh, the school of cavalry timer. So like, it should be a one night advantage, I'd imagine here. Mm hmm. Well, I say that. Is Wham being a bit? It's going to be more. Yeah, he's it's being gonna very be greedy. I mean, I don't blame him for greed, right? Like your villagers are too far away to pull back. Usually in this situation, you've kind of with three villagers got enough gold together, so you can maybe afford to use one or two extra on the school of cavalry up. But no way in this situation. Yeah, the issue with the outpost as well is um, it's uh, not going to really defend that well because it, he can't put more than five villagers on the gold, right? Mm -hmm. If he puts more than five villagers on the gold, the knights are just going to dive and get a villager kill. And soften them up in the meantime. But at least he'll be able to deal with the vanguard men at arms. Well, I say that. He's quick to move away. And in fact, he tanked with the scout. So Yui got the aggro instead. Worst situation for Wan possible there. Spearman from Blade is trying to also harass a little bit of the gold here. Ship's getting pulled though, and Sca um, Spearman is surrounded. You think that we're trapped here with you? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. 
Ah, oh, that's close. Could have almost killed a villager there. Yeah. One more uh, hit. Yui seemed to know exactly how that was going to go, though. So he keeps the villager alive, and now that's going to be a, a sheep gathering villager for the future. <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah, look who else is missing out on gold. gold. Ah, oh, I mean, Bla Blade doesn't need the gold right now. He's getting onto stone. He wants more military schools, but the issue is that HFs have come in. Longbows are already being made, and yeah, right now it's just a world of pain for Team Blam. And the confidence there as well. Like you're playing English and you go back deer. Sure, it's back deer, but you're against French here, right? This just this is a great representation of how ahead Louis Yui are right now. That they can go and do that against a French player. Yeah, and they know that they're ahead. Scout though, going down here from Yui. That's gonna hurt a lot when it comes to the vision. But Knight is gonna it looks like roam to the stone. No, it's gonna roam around the base of a uh, wham here. Maybe you can get on that wood line. It's definitely an exposure point that isn't protected right now. Or he just stays there as a looming threat, right? Always keeping Wham reacting. Meanwhile, at home, you can see there's an attempt to be annoying by Blade's second spear. But uh, it's at this point, with that many villages on gold, it's just a death wish to go in there. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, there's no barriers yet, so these spears aren't going to be upgraded anytime soon. Now, we never talked about how ludicrously turtled up Blade is in this game. That. That might be the safest spawn next to so far today, next to States one in the Abassa game. Yeah, on Lipany, that was an insane spawn. Yeah, the woodlines are really close to his base here. Gonna be tough to do damage there with a knight. But Longbowmen are on their way. Six out by now. I like the macro here by now. Like the two men out, you can barely feel the delay that it's caused for Louis. Yeah, well, I mean, when you consider what happened on the other side, it's not too surprising, right? Essentially, you've created a 2v1 dynamic. Like, Wham is he's kind of there with a participation ribbon. In fairness, he has got up to two knights now, but that, that delay. He knows he won't be able to take a, a head straight fight in a 2 and 2 And now here we go. Uh -oh. The Lombos are coming in, and we talked about it a couple of times so far that the outpost range isn't going to be enough. Mm -hmm. The Lombos can still just park there and deny the golden come. Absolute nuisance. And I love that little detail. You see that from Louis? He brought the men at arms forward in case they were in range so that it would be the armored unit tanking the shots. Yeah, they're just going to completely idle out the gold and come here for Wham. I mean, he, so that's not going to be a lot of knights. Well, they also burned the mining camp on the original gold. So he can't just pivot a few immediately from the sheep there. And we highlight this already. You know, two or three knights early on as an advantage. It can turn into an insurmountable lead, and we're probably now going to start seeing that realized. Mining camp gets dropped on the original gold mine. You are French, so it only costs 25 wood, right? That's the one nice side about it, at least. <laughs> Meanwhile, the boy arms. An arm. Look at him go. <laughs> Actually, right. men and arm defending that, but now there's going to be a knight from Yui, and he's going to be able to just easily get that knight off him. I, like, I, I don't think Wham realizes. I think, yeah, he's distracted right now because his raid attempts onto his gold again. So I think that knight did actually go down. So he's lost the offender. Meanwhile, these Lombos, look at the position on this. With a the scout there, he can just dash in and snipe out these Lumberjacks. Yeah, and the Spearmen are also getting focused down by the Lombos. This is really tough to do anything with here right now. Knight also survives. There's just a sliver of HP remaining. He's looking for But the Longbowmen numbers right now. 14 Longbows compared to 9 normal archers. Oh, tease. that's so cheap. The TC is so close to the wood line. It's it fires great. over the wood line onto the Longbowman. And it's annoying for Louis because he has to take a fight with the archers first. You can see around that gold vein, he's trying to push the scout to get vision past. If he does that, it's just jackpot. But the angle, especially like credit, has to go to Blade with the fact he left those two trees on the south side that created this blocker for vision. Yeah. And now he's just going to go over to the other wood line, which is also in range of his TC. Yes, this is totally reasonable. <laughs> oh, one villager gets taken down. You can't stay on that on that gold mine, I feel like. No. You have to move back. Maybe and onto wood or something, but can't stay there anymore. And this is the beauty, like the way that Louie and Yui followed this up, right? They pushed Wham inevitably towards this gold vein, which parked the Lombo army between two players. And then what did they get as a bonus on top of that? Blade was playing that east side of his base with the Lumber already. So you were in range to sweat out two players with one move. Beautiful. And the longbow numbers now also in a position where they can deal serious damage to the knights. Now the knights aren't going to be able to take any like easy engagements against the longbows anymore. No. And the knight count is mirrored, right? Like Yui, I say mirrored when you're in the engagement. Yui is now two ahead, but of course he has to run across the field. And that scout did just snoop on what was happening there, that Yui was playing forward out of his base with a pocket economy. So Wham is trying to strike. He's trying to go on the offensive. 
Sending all the knights across, and at the same time we see Yui putting up a lot of walls there. Those walls unlikely to be going up as there is already two knights on their way. But at the same time, the gold that Wham only just now moved on to, really, really exposed here. And that was a great micro there. Yui, he tanked like three lances with one of the knights, and then just peeled him back perfectly. But finally, those knights have arrived. They are going to be a nuisance. Outpost is at least there, so minimization of casualties. And now the Lombo's in position, not only can you lose a knight, could easily lose a villager if you're not careful. Yeah, has to pull all the villagers from gold back oh, again. And all that... this gold idle time hurts a lot <laughs> oh, here. No, come on. Oh, he's through. Oh, mamma mia, not like this. Oh, you forgot to cancel the edge walls. Yeah, if they were cancelled, then that that wouldn't have happened. He's just got to go out. If he cancelled those again, then... Oh, the scout guy Those knights would have been trapped. Oh, Blades that's blind. a night vision. Yeah, so they only have one scout between two players now. It's going to hurt a lot. And, like, it's it's not going to be a case of uh, Blade being like, oh, I lost my scout. Can you make another one <laughs> for me? Like, <laughs> Wham is going to be like, no, dude, no. <laughs> now, also, on top of that, keep in mind, Louis is become, becoming very impossible to go raid on a counter-offensive, right? We noticed the walls come from Yui, but Louis, the freedom he's had, well, he's not sitting on it all willy-nilly. Instead, he's going to look to wall up and create these funnel points. Yeah, and that's so important in these team games, right? And... Night number looking really high right now for you, Metal, compared to Wham, and it's open that Metal I'm play. Dive coming in. Lou and Yui trying to force an engagement. A decent amount of knights. If they actually get like four more in there, they might just dive and torch down the building. So it's something that Wham and Blade need to be astutely aware of. But this is a good raid. Yui caught being even more greedy after he was snitched on. He goes back to the four deer. And he's going to pay a price here. In fact, he turns with a few villagers. That should be free going down okay. at least. Wait, what? where are we? <laughs> wait, wait what? 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 Both, uh, both uh, of you, what is going on here? He's trying to rush the what outpost are doing? up. What? That's not happening. Not with four knights there. They're, they're diving. That. That's why. They're diving onto the gold vein back between Wham and Blaze base. Fully distracted. Fully engaged here. Now, Yui takes a heavy sting in there, but he does have momentum on his side for the moment. The night count still favors him. The outpost is burning, and you see the retreat, but this retreat is not safe, Crackity. They don't have an outpost on this gold vein. There's nothing to fall back to. You can't fall back to the spears. I mean, the spears, there's, there's six, seven spears here, but here against 30 knights. And you see the backstab attempt, but Wham's not confident to try and dive that at all. That many longbowmen that will chip away at him easy peasy. The only edge they have right now is these longbowmen are old men. They can't actually chase you. Yeah, and Wham actually taking down reinforcements. That's going to help him quite a bit here. Definitely necessary. So reinforcements from Lulet Metal are going to be delayed. Or some wards coming in makes it harder for Yui to get onto the gold from Wham. But gold is only one of the issues from Wham. Food is going to be the other one. Louis is still running Longbowman into their death. That's like, what, three picks so far this way? That adds up quickly, but... <gasps> Wham! Oh. He doesn't see! The knights are now charging in on the deer stack! Oh I my don't... god! Oh! He hasn't got oh, wheelbarrow! No. They're, they're so slow. They are so slow. Chop them down, boys. Chop them down like the trees. Meanwhile, the cut and run on the other side. Wham! He does the only thing he can. He trades villages for Longbowman. A pricey exchange on both sides, but now a forced reaction. Yui has to ignore the villagers and save what he can, but Louis's army is being decimated. Yeah, this is definitely very, very valuable right now because behind this blade is at over 20 spearmen and 30 plus archers. The less longwomen there are, the better blade's army is looking. And right now it's looking really, really good. What a recovery. 34 archers from 21 spears. He hasn't even added a meta in yet, Crackity. Imagine what happens to these dynamics the moment that arrives. Yeah, a lot of movement speed for the units as well. And with infantry, movement speed is going to be really important. And now Wham actually with the superior knight numbers here because Yui split his army. And you have to wonder, like, Yui, could he have done a similar damage with five or six knights is what I'm thinking right now. Did it have to be everything in that one location? That's the question right now. Vizier point coming in. Meta probably on its way now. Or sometime soon. Once that Vizier point gets clicked. This is so problematic. Behind this, keep in mind that, you know, Louis has at least expanded his farm so he can kind of push production higher. But, you know, Louis is, uh, Yui rather, has been relying on these frontal deer. He hasn't got a second TC, no play behind this. And all of a sudden, after being on the offensive for the first 14 minutes of this game, 
suddenly they're going to have to hunker down in the turtle mode. Longbowman stepping back, forcing the bait for by Wab. Yui looking favorable in the night numbers, but I'm just looking at that Spearman count and I'm worried. Yeah, Meta is now also on its way. It's going to mean these units from, Wham, uh, from Blade are going to be a lot stronger in just a little bit. Military numbers right now, heavily in the favor of King Blam. And they're feeling it. They're taking this opportunity. You can see the Blade is walling in the west side entirely. In fact, that's even going to benefit Wham, who has his entire gold crew gathering in that area. And finally now with this Bream Room, Wham, at critical time, is able to move out into this pocket economy, such as the deer at the back of his base that almost cost him dearly. When they're stepping back, I mean, the Lumbermen, they're still taking really favorable engagements here. Mm -hmm. Every time that Blade thinks, okay, maybe I can take a raid against the Lumbos, he can't. He's just losing way too many in these engagements. And we're at that critical number you talked about, right? Where these, these metas, they show their face for a second, they die. And now, apparently two is the critical number for Louis. It's time to reach up. If those Longbowmen were slapping cheeks already, they are about to knock jaws off of faces. Longbow veterancy is going to be on the way. Yeah, really important to note is that ever since the council got changed to where it's just an archer range that produces twice as fast instead of an archer range which only produces Longbowmen and that twice as fast, the upgrade for Redundancy on the Longbowman also gets sped up. Mm -hmm. Spooky. So that upgrade is going to be coming in in like 30 seconds. Now, you do have the advantage again of the fact these Longbowmen are old men with walking sticks. They do not move fast, but that is the only advantage you're going to have now. And with the way this early game is played out for Blade and Wham, I see no world in which either of them are going Castle Age anytime soon. Yeah, Wham did move out onto the board, the board that's on the side of Blade. Blade, as the Ottomans, isn't going to take that anytime soon, so Blade is... Uh... Oh, Happy push. to give that one over to Wham. Yeah, and that, yeah, that's going to be a big push now with the... With, uh, it's a there. great read. Okay. Yeah, it's a great read because uh, I was looking at the production and Blade had cut everything. It was just military schools. But this is dangerous. He's essentially throwing Wham to the wolves. If he can't draw enough tension home to defend, he could flatline. He might just do that. Dive in. Knights, see an opportunity. Completely unguarded in this area. A reaction coming on the way from Blade. But even if he gets that tech up, he's going to be playing up against the Silver Hats of the English and they strike hard and they'll do exactly that. Wrap around the side. Spearman try to charge forward. No easy opportunity, though. Meta is at least going to survive. And that was dangerous, by the way. These Longbowmen would have instantly taken him out there. Yeah, veterancy is no joke on these Longbows. And now, Wham, though, he's in the economy from you, Metal. He's getting a good good amount of villager kills here. You need to go. That actually hurts quite a bit here if you're you right now. He was spin on a farm, tra uh, farm transition behind this as well. Yeah. I, and you're seeing the mirrored move now. It's actually the reaction. Yui, he goes in the line formation looking for the card off. But Wan, damn, this guy's got spidey senses. He knows to get out of dodge. He has, however, left Louis on his own. Something they need to be careful of. And the problem with this dynamic crack it is now Louis has to retreat these incredibly slow units at his key power point. He doesn't really need to retreat them, though, even on their own, I think. Discharge. With uh, the plus two damage. Oh, no they didn't see him. Did. Well, We'll lose. Wham has to sacrifice four. these three, four. Yeah. Yeah. But they can, they can momentum this. Remember, like, the player who's teched up his blade, right? And and if you play into Wham's base, he's out of position. And the full wall has finally come. I, I, I wonder if they could have afforded these walls earlier and how different the last two minutes would have looked if they had. Yeah, they wouldn't have had to fall back at all. And they could have just gone for a static push with Rams potentially and charge off not being taken here between these two players. Is there still no wheelbarrow from Wham? Because those villages look slow. Like I, he, has a, he has a mill. Like, he should definitely have wheelbarrow right now. Please, for the love of God, tell me we've got... Because that's a big weak point. Oh my... He hasn't got wheelbarrow. He doesn't realize. Oh no, that hurts so much. Especially I, at this stage of the game. Look at the north side. The <laughs> the northwest side. Villagers <laughs> have been moving so far from Wham and Royal Jeez. Institute now coming in for Yui. And Wham, he could go up sometime soon, but it's still going to be quite a bit until then. And the only way he's going to realize he doesn't have wheelbarrow is if a momentous raid comes in that costs him 10 villages. I mean, it's one of those things, you know what I'm talking about, Crackety, muscle memory, you do it at a distinct point. And if you forget it, it's usually hard to remember in a 1v1. Imagine trying to remember it in a 2v2. One more doing so much damage here, two these knights. He can charge him right yeah. now, that's a heavy hit. Night charge coming in. Another knight going down. Army reacting. Blade coming Flash. to his defense. Yui. He backs up. Takes an initial poker from the sticks. But Louis, he's the threat factor they're worried about. And one minute arms baiting the entire army is bad for the southern team here. They waste so much time on these chunky boys. They lose four times the units in response. 
49 side right now for Wan. 26 for Yui, and he's just aged up. The veterancy on the Knights is going to be coming in any moment now. This is getting spooky. They know it's, uh, it's one fight to hold. They got one hope, and that hope, his name is Blade. Five, 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 five. He hasn't got oh, five one. mangoes. He's only got one. He has some knights now of his own, actually. The mangoes, everything, though. Like, if he loses this mango, I don't know how you hold. Yeah, there is no way back if that mango falls in. <laughs> the issue is the mango. Wait. Oh, that's he a faked him. far shot. He faked him. Louis, you magnificent beast. And the oh. meta got taken down. Now, you struggle to chase, right? As Lance, you talked about coming out, but look at how trivial it is. The difference here seems to be, I don't think the level two undermesh is there for Blade. And that's a longbow, it's just so strong with that bonus range. Means that all the longbows can attack at the same time, but only the front line of Blade's archers can. It's problematic. He's yeah, diving forward. So far to attack. Still no meta. And no, the Magos taken. These men at arms, these men at arms have time and time again wasted so much effort from Blade and WoW. Oh god. There's only little spears remaining now for Blade and the, the night numbers from you. They can just dive onto this. He can truly just go for it now if he wants to. Like you said, there's barely any spears. Even if there was like 10 plus spears still here. Look at the night numbers. These are veteran seed. They are the spook factor and they look for the surround. They know this is the clap down they want. Wham, now looking for the exchange come with the backstab. But remember, Feudal Knights up against Castle Age Lombos. They will get struck down just as quick as they strike. And you can't help but feel that that is GG. Louis and Yui will take game one. That was just so well played. They knew exactly what they had to do. The men at arms at the beginning just ca catching Wham at such a bad timing. He only just went out to gold and delayed the age up for such a long time, meaning that he was behind the night numbers. And then, I mean, it looked like for a point that uh, Wham could get some really good raids in on Yui, but wasn't quite able to do as much damage as he needed to get back into this game. And Yui Metal just with a superior night number and then with the age up, both players in Castle Age compared to only Blade. On Blam's side, and yeah, this was just a really, really solidly played game here from the Chinese team. Uh, they got me excited for sure. I mean, the the synchronicity, right? I think like that we've seen some good performances in this duo matchups, but for me, like Louis and Yui, very coordinated here. You can tell that these guys came from a team background. That that's where you know it really kind of shown for them, and it, it's shining through in this tournament and in an early win up against Wham and Blade. But of course, these are best of five, so one point on the board. Two more needed if they want to get that dub. Yeah, definitely. Like two more games in a best of five, at least. It's not going to be as over as fast as in a best of three, potentially. Uh, in a best of three with the same um, setup when it comes to like Sif drafting, usually just pick the best Sifts right off the bat. And oh boy, well, haven't well, we seen something like that today? <laughs> oh, well, we're going to have a look, look at, at it. Actually, we, we don't want to get to that ugliness. We want to focus on this glory. Because it is only glory that we offer. No loser's bracket here. If you lose a series, you are out. Of course, Crackety already familiar with this as he doused Core and Don Arty's chance in proceeding. For those wondering, you missed out on some amazing series yesterday. Of course, Marine, Lord, and Eliana were able to go through. Zertan and Noosh continue on. And then, of course, at that bottom, we already have one of our next weekend matchups. It will, of course, be a clash of Canadians mixed in there. Puppy, Poor, and Lash facing off against Magic and Maito. If you did not catch the Magic Maito versus Sword of State series earlier, you missed out on an absolute treat. Never have I said that five mirror matchups in a row is so enjoyable. Yeah, it's also been a really, really long set, so definitely <laughs> a lot of content to enjoy there. I'll just say that much. Uh, some really, really back and forth games, incredibly evenly balanced between these two teams. And yeah, it's... Those were an incredible series, but we already saw this matchup earlier there. Abbasid, Roos, and uh, Roos Abbasid. Two completely different civilization compositions. They are. As we talked about. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's going to be on Lipania as well again. So could we be potentially seeing something similar that what we saw from um, Magic and Mido? Which looked really, really strong here, by the way. Yeah, and I'm wondering, right, these guys would have been watching and waiting. They might have been doing a bit of practicing, but they might have glanced across and seen this. So maybe they take some inspiration. I'm especially expecting something similar out of Wham and Blade, right? For a start, Wham, he scraps yeah. regularly with magic. Like magic, Puppy Paw, and Wham has always been that that holy trinity that are circling each other. They imprint their ideas upon each other quite regularly. Yeah, the NA team especially should be going for something similar here than what we uh, compared to what we've seen earlier. We saw it in the first game, like the French Ottoman pick. That just kind of gives you gives it away, like 
who were the practice partners for these uh, for these teams? I feel like um, Wham and Blade very likely could have potentially practiced with uh, Puppy and Lash, and then yeah, just all all in A teams just practice with each other there. Yeah. Makes sense considering the time zones. Exactly, that's what I was just thinking. Not just time zones, but also potential language barrier. Like, you know, even if, for example, you know that Louis and you speak Chinese, in inherently it's, it's almost like you instinctually you can't help but reach out to like another European team first for the time zone, but also because you assume that coordinating is, is easier right like i believe from what i've seen louis and you speak a little bit of english so it would be doable but what i'm getting at is you know if that is the, the perceived point and that they don't speak great english is the thing that a lot of people assume going in who's been practicing with them have many people been doing that and has it hurt their chances if not or helped it considering all that team experience they already have to fall back on that's also a great thing where, like, the Chinese players, because they have so many really high-level team game players, I could imagine that Louis and Yui, they probably could have, like, get some uh, scrims in with, for example, Neptune and uh, CSO. And, yeah, just like that, they could also get some really solid team games in um, to practice here, which is definitely nice that they practice with, like, a different kind of um, group. So, like, there's, like, individual meta kind of bubbles, how I like to call them, which are quite different from each other. But now we go into our game number two of this set here. Team Blam versus Yui Louie. Whew. And, well, we are going to have another quite open map. It is, of course, Lippany, but as we know, when you get into 2v2s and 3v3s, it's a little bit less like Lippany and a little bit more similar to Dry Arabia. Of course, you do tend to get more Stealth Forest layered in. The first thing I'm already looking for is did someone get lathered with those tree lines? It looks like Blade might have been blessed by the gods. A fairly protected front side with some good resources behind it. He's sharing a woodline with Wham from the looks of it. <laughs> like, that back wood is uh, definitely Wham's there that he's going to be going for. Could also be Blades, though, potentially, um, judging on, like, how the game goes if the front line gets uh, focused down. But yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. Like, we saw it played really, really well earlier between um, Magic and Mido, and I'm wondering if we're going to be seeing uh, Blade and Wham going for their strategy here. Then again, Team uh, Lou and Yui. They probably have a good idea of how to play this one as well. Yeah, it's interesting. Actually, I don't know about you, but I always favor the Abbasid player in these two v twos having his TC more forward than the the wrist player, right? Because my my thought is usually you have a lot more buildings, so you create kind of this maze that's beneficial. But I'd say unfortunately for for Blade and Wham this time, like Blade is a bit more front and center. He at least has those choke points to to orientate himself around, though. But I do wonder where that Kremlin's going to go. Uh, in theory, it should go as far forward, but still protecting resources as possible, because you do want to make use of that added uh, line of sight that gets the Kremlin. It gets all the upgrades for free that the normal Wooden Fortress get, and one of the upgrades is actually one that increases the line of sight of it by like 100%. So it has like a ton of line of sight, so if you get it into a spot where it's not being blocked by, um, like a, uh, by a wood line, you can see like almost into the middle of the map with it if it's in your base. But in a 1v1. <laughs> <laughs> not quite that vision True. in this. <laughs> it does still spot out quite a lot of raids, so yeah. it's not something that you should put right next to a woodline, I personally believe. I'd love to see him drop it maybe south side of that stone outcropping between their base. Let's see if he goes for it. He should have the tech up very soon. I'm seeing a military wing on for both, um, both the Amazon players here. It has to be, right? So I, Yeah, I like this way more than the culture wing that we saw um, earlier. It just means that... In like a really, really long um, fuel age, the military wing is just way, way, way better. It just makes the unit so much stronger. And here we go, Kremlin directly uh, in front of a wood line. So not the not making the most out of that line of sight, but protecting a lot of the resources here. Blade hasn't aged up yet. Yeah, there we go, villagers are being sent forward. I think he could have tried for one past the stone outcropping, but maybe he was worried about this. The scout shows up, wastes 10 extra seconds, and all of a sudden you, you could easily find yourself a knight behind. Yeah. So far, um, similar or rather the same landmark choices from all of the players here so far. And well, that's I not mean, true. It looks One like there's side, um, I'm gonna crack it. I'm gonna have to Kremlin military wing, military wing Kremlin. Come on, this difference is so... true. Just like we have Rus and Abbasid and Abbasid and Rus on it's the other very side. Very different, my friend. It's completely unique matchup. Interesting, Louis. He went for four scouts. Can oh. we? Is that is that the current bounty that uh, that Louis has at the bottom left? Four scouts, and he gets 280 Bounty. 
I, wondering how much uh, bounty. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, is, it's uh, gonna get a little bit more. Play. But uh, oh, uh, 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 Marine will look away. Why? Wow, like Blade is beating him with one less scout. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, this is a pro scouts play from Louis. He's going up to five scouts. Yeah, I mean, definitely makes sense. With that many scouts, pro scouts should definitely be the way that you're opting in for. It means that you're probably skipping out on wheelbarrow early on instead going for that uh, pro scouts approach. Yeah, no wheelbarrow has come in for Louis so far. Yeah, this is 100%. Like, it, it, I think that's when you can go pro scouts is if you skip wheelbarrow initially. It has to be. Yeah. He's giving the also gets a generous sheep donation, which makes sense. As the ambassador, you're happy just going onto, uh, onto the berries early on. And, oh, especially I mean, if you're... Spawn. Like, have you, have you yeah, checked and... north of Yui's base? That's a lot of food there. He needs to get a TC up there. Oh, wham. He actually went for a really early uh, stable here. Some horsemen. I like um, the idea. Yeah, it's going to definitely... It's not going to completely deny the second TC, but it's going to dictate where it's going to go up. I think it's also... Like, we talked about how beneficial Blade's positioning is for the most, right? And the way they share that tree line. You look on the other side, they don't share a tree line, right? Like, they have some defenses around them, but I'd say there's, there's this weave opportunity between both their bases that doesn't exist for the Northern team. What is this? What, what, what is this? How would, like... The scouts, can we... <laughs> They're back. The scouts are back. One the damage, scout one, damage one damage, one damage, one damage, one damage, one damage. Oh, but that's going to be the cleanup now. Like, there you go. A horseman can move in. Oh, no. Not all these scouts. What will I do? Stab. Just stab. <laughs> back when scouts used to do four damage with each hit, they used to be the perfect answer for when your opponent goes for, like, a... That's true. Or Dark Age um, Villager Short <laughs> Rush with English. Like these just That's look, not the case anymore, sadly. That looked like five-year-olds taking on a 14-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> getting booted off, thrown around. They're, they're hitting you with like a foam sword. Yeah, like, ah! It's like, well, you could give me a migraine, but I'm going to give you a concussion, son. <laughs> you, sir. You are no longer allowed in the, in the ball bath. <laughs> People like, KP has a kid, right? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't throw at this. I mean, uh, she's one year uh, years old. At least recommend at least thirty more one year olds if you're going to take on a fourteen year old. Uh, that's enough villagers to just fight that bank. Yeah, speaking of, of drowning them with babies, this, <laughs> oh, this the is the appropriate there, number. Oh, you got them both. You eat. <laughs> yeah, but the archers are there. He needs to finish oh, that TC oh. soon. He needs to focus on it. Oh, villager, let's go down. Oh no! Whoa, that's the scout. Okay. What the? What was that? Who? Huh? Was that the TC? He doesn't. He gets no value out of this. He loses the scout. He loses the horseman. Doesn't get a single villager kill. Yui looking good here. Wow. Okay. Wow. <laughs> and that's gonna be that's gonna be golden age behind this as well. I think he has enough buildings with that. Mm. Yeah. Was well, the TC's close enough for the daisy chain, right? Wham's well, gonna do something similar by keeping it close to home. He does, of course, get that deer stat. But yeah, that's that's the yeah, tier one. Kind of... Wait, does does Wham have his yet? Because that's a big difference. If okay, he does. I was about to say, okay. you should at this stage. Like, it's 10 buildings, and we're seven minutes yeah. in. Gremlins also out on the oh, field, geez. looking for value. No value to be found here, though. Yeah, this is a this is an interesting one. So we've got the Pro Scouts, but Louis still goes to the double TC. And this is a big difference compared to the Abbasid Roost Mirror we saw earlier, right? Where last yeah. series with Maito, he remained the aggressor in one TC. Everyone's being greedy here. Yeah, Blade also going for that second TC, and... Behind that, he's now investing into Knights, which is going to be quite a bit earlier now than uh, Louis. Louis investing into those seven scouts. That does delay the Knight production quite a bit. Good thing, though, for Louis is he didn't need to make the stable. Because uh, Roos, they can make their scouts out of the hunting cabin. So didn't need the stable yet. So and it's now going to be well. able to... Yeah, he, I mean, he got fed so many sheep as well. He's going to be able to pump out Knights for quite a long time. And Wham... I'm not sure why he's still making horsemen right now. He definitely needs to move into another type of unit now. I'm, I'm wondering with four processes here, right? Like, you're probably assuming there's going to be archers with your opponents, right? So, like, I, I get the archers. I mean, maybe you just bolster your archer line more. and Because you shouldn't, like you said, you shouldn't need the horsemen. Like, the knight should be provided elsewhere. It's that kind of one-two tap. Literally what we saw from Yui and Louis last game with French-English. Yeah, I mean, the thing is... <sighs> You can bank okay. on... Oh, God, a 30. See, that's... I, I that's... guess that explains the horseman, right? It gives him map control to yeah. do this. I'm still really, really doubtful right now that this is the correct choice. I mean, it's getting scouted even. Like, Louis knows this. He has got so many scouts out that he spots that as well. And 
They must know that this is the third TC. This can't be the second one. No, and, and Louis, he is now getting knights to react to these type of plays, so it gets more and more dangerous. You know, you know, it's not going to take very long. Like, how many villages was pulled by Wham? Probably eight at least. You're only going to have a safe point for ten. So very quickly, this becomes a liability. Just look at the distance. Remember that this is a 2v2 map, not a 1v1. He's incredibly far away from home. Yeah, the gremlins to get pulled. It's a little bit too late now. The TC will go up in time, so gremlins shouldn't find any value there. The issue is that, I mean, Louis, he's already, um, not Louis, Yui, he's already making his archers. And Abbasid on 2TC with mass archers, I feel it's like much more scary than... Uh, Abbasid on 3TC making horsemen here and some archers. Yeah. I'm also thinking about the fact that, like, another issue with that TC being so far away, usually it's impossible to take out extension TCs of the Abbas that early because of the fire armor. You're not daisy chaining that in to get the influence, right? So that is a very squishy town center. Yeah, I mean, who's going to be first to like 50 archers? Definitely going to be you in this one. Yeah. Gremlins, even after enough, idling the villagers there for like solid 20 seconds just being in the TC. Getting their value, for sure here. And even though Wham is on three TCs, or he has been on three TCs for a while, I mean, the villager count still is rather even right now. Well, don't be deceived, right? I think he completed that TC like half a minute ago. Oh, maybe 40 seconds now. So like, it's not going to kick in just yet. But I do agree, like it's becoming, it's going to become a sore point for it's extension. It's just going to scale. Yeah. yeah, it's just going to scale far too slowly here. And he can't, it's going to take a long time for him to daisy chain that with the Golden Gate uh, influence. In order to get the plus five um, fire armor on that, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Well, we are also seeing Blade playing a dangerous game right now. He's playing Pocket Ecos. In fact, he's playing double ball on the northwest side of the map. I like that in theory. I I really do. I mean, if it's not getting scouted, then uh, and he does have a wooden fortress with it, so it's not overly greedy. We'll see if it becomes a stinger. Night count is mirrored perfectly for the time being. So no edge there, but I am noticing that lead this building for you, Ian. And the thing to highlight here is not just like, you know, oh, yes, horsemen counter archers, but let's say the stalemate's out and you eventually have to scale up. We've talked about composite bows time and time again because it really is a sore sticking point. That's an edge yeah. that, that if you don't start taking fights at this current scaling rate, Yui will be ahead in. I also think that pro scouts have done a significant job here now. Um, well, not by now, but like overall. It's going to mean a lot in the coming minutes. Villager isn't going to get that wall in. It's going to lose his life instead. And Horsemen do find some value. Also, also Fall back. Up. I got 26 free shot at you. The, the, the lead man here is like, I'm almost dead. Everyone else must run. Oh, they need to run right now. Walls are going up by Louis, but a bit too slow. Knights are going to react, but outnumbered here by Blade. So Yui has to keep retreating. Well, he won't be able to peel yeah, off effectively they're... here. That's just a, a wipe of the front line. Yeah, the Knights from Louis, they're just uh, at the TC right now, so they're not where they need to be. Now, there's still a lot of archers here, and these archers do a good amount of damage to the Knight. Look at that. Two wow. Knights going down, and the other Knights almost half HP. With the Gremlins, yeah. I mean, Blade has to fall back. He needs to fall back, but he's still going to lose like oh. one to two Knights there. That's a lot of Gremlins at the same time from him. Yeah, but it almost looks like he, he blew his whole load there, right? Like, how many is that? That's got to be, like, yeah. seven charges. So after that... I mean, uh, he clicked the A key. He definitely oh, clicked the A key there Louis, on the Louis smiling then, because he knows after this, he just rides in. Hey, follow me. Yeah, like, right now. like, they're just singing the, the song from Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Right? Come with me, and you'll be <laughs> in a world of your nightmares. I love that part where you turn oh, around like, wait, they're still alive? <laughs> huh, they last a long time. Huh. Why, why are they still alive? They've almost covered the entire map. Surely they should be dead by now. Charges. And this is going to be where the push is going to be coming in as well. Mm -hmm. Enough knights to kind of mirror out with the assistance of the archers for sure here. Sure, Blade, you know, he has numerical advantage in a one-on-one, -on -one, but this is far from that, folks. And the gremlins, well, they'll push back, but that's it. Well done. <laughs> gonna be a little bit annoying here, but now they're gone. <laughs> All gone. Love the death hull of a torch. And <laughs> He's still oh, get... come on! No, oh this is... no, not the hunting cabin's getting completely night. <laughs> Imagine that Blade just builds the hunting cabin he's gonna and build then it. he's gonna look at it. He's gonna look at it five minutes later. Oh, I could have sworn there were deer there. Wow, I, I gathered all those deer really quickly. I didn't. Oh, no, please, please tell me he looks before he completes. Oh. No, this is gonna hurt. 
That's, oh, no. Oh. That's not cheap. That's 275 wood. Yeah, that is going to hurt quite a bit. And now, this is what we talked about. There's, there's no connection here, right? There's no fire armor bonus. So really, you could commit the Knights and successfully take down this TC. In fact, they've got a ram on the way. Backstab is coming, though. Blade, he's got the numbers. With the archers in position from Wham. They could turn this around. Charge in. No charge comes out from Blade. Oh, That's a for Louis. And now he's going to stand his ground. Archers chasing in deeper, looking for the trade out. Teal There's is camels. Gonna pull camels back. are getting sniped. Takes him out. One more remaining, though. The aura is going to be there. It's going to linger, and oh, it's going to be the downfall so of Louis. The aura is the difference maker here. The knights from Louis just aren't doing the damage that they need to be doing. That, I mean, oh my they god, they actually made it. They legit and he's going up behind that. Oh, okay, folks, this could be a very quick game at this rate. Like, they're going to lose so much ground from this. There's so many archers on the retreat. There's still plenty of knights. And remember, every time you start a step back to return fire, Wham's catching up with his archer mass. He's not sitting by idly, nor is he sitting by idly on the tech. Eco wing a minute and 30 seconds from, away from being complete, at which stage Yui and Louis are on the clock. And the camels. What a big, big difference. We can see it there. 19 minus 3 damage, and... That makes a huge difference with the night numbers there. Mm -hmm. Despite the failure to get the charge off, right? The failure to lift off a blade at the beginning. Those camels really did turn it about for them. Yeah, it's not as worse as bad for Roos as it is for French. If one of them don't get yeah. the charge off. Just because you don't miss out on the bonus damage here. But <laughs> it looks like Blade realized what happened there. And he's he's just going to have to go for the, for the berries here. But... Looks like Culture Wing coming in from U Metal as well, so H up coming in from both Abyss players. That's a big but behind difference. this, it's a it means so much right now that Blade and Wham were able to hold this early push because they are on plus one TC, right? Yes. So their scaling is gonna be quite a bit better. But at the same time, obviously Louis with the Pro Scout play means that they're gonna have a much much later farm transition here. And now we see the raids coming in, the food sources. Keep in mind that Yui he exhausted pretty much everything safe to him behind this. I think he's got one berry patch safe. Everything else is on the front line outside the base now. Yui, that line formation pushed against this. Tech up's close to being complete. Remember, Wham is going to have about a minute's advantage here. That's huge if he can find the fight due to composite bows and veterancy for archers. Yeah, scouts do get taken down or rather get found out here from Louis. So it does reduce the vision a little bit. Age up completed for Wham. He's also queuing knights immediately. Knights Ooh. and camel riders. That's that's interesting that he's not just going to keep pumping archers right now oh, instead of going yeah. into the knights. Well, maybe he assumes that the lead is going to be bigger. I mean, it's still going to be worthwhile here, right? But maybe he assumes that at best, Yui's only just start the tech up. So archers are likely to be thrown away here, but it is kind of a whip to do die, right? Like you clearly wanted to move away from this unit entirely. Yeah, it still definitely feels bad getting those like snipe right now. He definitely probably still queued the veterancy on the archers. So losing them... Does hurt quite a bit at the same time. Louis. Blade. Oh god, he's getting the Abbey out now as well. This is where he's also played. Yeah, Blade is at least taking up, so he's matching it, but he's far away with his knight, so wasn't able to kind of skirt that fight. Luckily, they done pretty superficial damage out of that. Yui, tech up has now arrived. The Abbasid players will lead the way, but we see a very big difference in their approach. Abbey on one side, High Trade House on the other. Rose Cuts on one side, Farm Transition on the other as well, and. Yeah, I mean, farm transition is definitely going to hurt. It doesn't mean that he's going to be a little bit slowed down now. But once the farm transition is over, he's going to potentially look in a better position because in the end, Louis at one point will have to make a farm transition as well. I mean, I I, I, I would just... I, I, sorry, I'm having nightmares about that high trade house. That, I, I don't think the number's going to be big. I'm guessing... 130. Yeah, I was feeling like 127, 126 maybe. Oh, let's check that out. Okay, well, it's one uh, round, I guess. Uh, 112? Mm, yeah. At least he's getting free deer. That's true. I will get his booty up. The army's ready to the ride deer. out. Yeah. Boyus Fortitude also coming in right now. For one of our Roost players. I believe that is for Louis. Manganel? Uh, this is unguarded. Oh. That's a freebie. He tries to body block it. They get on top of it. Mango will get one shot and then it's dead. There's no way he can protect it. It's a decent shot, but not good enough. And now the push forward. Yui, feeling confident at this stage. He has got the veterancy. Wouldn't be surprised if he got composite bows in there. And you can see that Blade is feeling the sting. The yeah, funeral. that's a lot of archers right now. There's 100 no archers! 
Oh, oh my god. No wonder it's ah. one-sided. Is, is this full, this is full map control lost, right, Crackity? Like, there's no way you can contest this. Hey, the map yeah. lost. You cannot find this. Actually, there's a lot of camel riders, but camel riders don't have any pierce armor. Knights oh. now arriving with the upgrades. <laughs> this is so bloody the many of gone. them. New knights coming in. They're going to do just as much damage. They take out a village and go for the backstab. But like, like Yui, he can just walk away from the keyboard and get himself a cappuccino. Because it's simply stand your ground. It's a move. It's a move, but with so many archers. 80 archers still on the field. No, no, dude, that's not a move. That's that stand ground right there. <laughs> that is a stand ground <laughs> command if I've ever seen one. <laughs> oh, my giddy on. And just like that, look at the military difference. Over a double up. Yeah, and then the Bastard versus Bastard War, you definitely cannot just suddenly move into Knights, it feels like. You need to match the armor count, uh, the archer count. Archer is just <laughs> so strong with the composite pose. All right, that was an A move. <laughs> and that A move, is it going to cost him? The Maganel takes so long to go up. Does Yui see this, though? If he does, that's going to be a heavy hit for Wham. Backs up. He sees it now, but he's going to, yeah, he's going to choose to retreat. Man, if he went straight for that and didn't A click on the houses, I actually think that's just Wham losing the entire army. Yeah, and now a couple knights going down as well. Mango. So much value gained here with these archers. Gremlins just being annoying. Counter raids are going to be ineffective right now. Just wasting time chasing their own territory. And they say, okay, well, if he's got Maganels, I'll go check on the opponent who doesn't have Maganels because he's been mass cavalry. They're into the base of the roost and Blade in danger here. A pullback of villages and a lot of them have to run. Heavy idle time. Maganel shots in the back. And now, actually, Wham, he has on 70 knights now. He yeah. has made a lot of knights. Where's Wham Louis has army? as many knights as enemy Roos. I mean, Louis' army seems to just be non-existent right now. Apparently, he's got 17 knights, but you wouldn't think it looking at the battlefield right here. So he must be going for raids onto the Ecos. He's diving multiple locations in Wham's base, trying to just snipe out these villages. Wham Struck is keeping up, though. Moving his units behind that. And Blade. Where, it's a where? lot of idle time right now for him, but that's, that's a... Ambitious oh, keep. That's a keep from Yui. Yeah, that's not going to go up. Maybe There's... you go for it in the stealth yeah, forest, right? Yeah, a lot of for it as well. Yeah, he... Wait, he might go for this. No, 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 no. He's terror. going for it. It's spotted. It's spotted, though. With the one fortress, it's getting spotted. But but he has archer edge here slightly. Slightly. But there are camel archers, camel riders, knights. All The whole kit and Kabul are coming in. So instead, he's going to cancel anyway. He moves further north and forces the pursuit. Meanwhile, knights still diving into their base. But the castle on the way up is going to have to be cancelled. Moving away by Yui. But he's wasting these archers' time. They're just being backstabbed in a fight they would have otherwise won. Instead, they're now even at best. They're just playing chick right now. They really oh, are. Oh, God. I mean, th that mango didn't get the heavy hit they were looking for, but Archer Mass stands their ground. And once again, Yui, what is this keep? This is <laughs> third keep attempt is going to be a cancel as well. There's no way you get that up. Yeah, very optimistic keep placements here so far. And Has he got enough for two? Looks like Yui. <laughs> Yui is uh, starting to fall behind when it comes to the archer numbers by quite a bit. He's also making knights now. I'm not sure if that's the correct choice. I think he should just double down on archer and, if anything, add in crossbows instead. Mm. I mean, well, I'm not surprised he's fallen behind. Like, what was that? 20 villages pulled. And he's still gathering enough stone that he could have afforded to build two keeps at the same time. I think that's where his eco for archers went entirely. Good lord. Yeah, definitely possible right now. Behind this, let's not forget, uh, though, that even though Blade and Wham have been on plus one TC, economy is still even after, like, 22 minutes yes. in the game. Like, a lot of damage has been done. Let's not let's now, not now, uh, forget there's, that. There's something else interesting here, Crackity. There's a horseman switch up, and I think this is why we're seeing Lancers laid in by Yui. It's almost like they're trying to just go mass horseman with the Roost player and then have a second cavalry component, the heavy cavalry, come from the Abbasid. Oh, large walls being Oops. built by Blade. Probably not in time there. What is this castle race in the center? Just everyone just carving up the territory. <laughs> this dive will be cancelled as they discover that they lost the race, to, the arms race there. But walls are not going to be successful. Yui and Louie make their way into the back. It's going to be so annoying now for Blade and Wham to deal with. And Ram's getting now, uh, Wham is now putting up some Rams here, trying to push into the base from Louie at. And I'm looking at the archer count right now, and archers are not something that you really want to push in with. No, and, and I'm also worried about these flanks because 
This is the downside of, of sharing wood so close together, is they're now playing wide flanks like this against Cavalry Mass. And another keep. Yui is a very big fan of these, and oh, he's going to beat Wham to the punchline. The worst part is by the time Wham realizes, I'm pretty sure he's going to already be building it. Uh, maybe, maybe. The yeah, thing is that that also means that the gold at the front there is going to be denied. Break through the wall on the east side. Army not in position to defend. That's going to force you to retreat. Farm transition does, of course, continue. But you can see Louis is trying to just stretch the map as much as possible, not have to just full dive into that. But he's going to be dove himself. Move in and say, well, where's the army? Finally arrives. Yui. It's like, well, I've got Springles. They need to do something. Backstab coming in from the cavalry, oh, though. There it is. That's the pinch. Wham, in a bit too deep. He's going to struggle to get out. He can't get out. He gets trapped. Oh my god, that's so many dead archers there. That's going to be horrible for Wham. He's not going to be able to keep up with the archer numbers anymore. Actually, I leave him alone. <laughs> I mean, you say that. He still lost half the army. I, I don't think he's even he going to be did. able to keep up. And now that was what I was oh, waiting no. for. Wham's so distracted by his dive. He doesn't realize he just died on the other side of the map. Oh god, that is heavy, heavy hits there for the economy right now. Blade and Wham. It's almost, yeah, 30 villagers behind right now. What? Blade, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, they were the other way what? around a few minutes ago. Oh, it was. Now fuck. it's not anymore. <laughs> Absolutely absurd. Blade, only thing you can do is try to find some value elsewhere. When life gives you lemonade, lemon, Let's make lemonade. If life gives you lemonade, I mean, you got it easy. <sighs> the, like the other team has gotten mayonnaise from life because that is... <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's spend time looking ugly right now. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. This dive in on oh, no, the villagers, like, this, this double keep. <laughs> they don't care. Uh, oh, great. You came to kill us? Let me just get my uh, oh, my God. palisades ready and my walls plus my keeps and we'll kill you. Oh, uh, age up. Imperial age coming in for Wham now. Oh, this is getting vile. Halcrowing. I am I mean, he's still able to keep up in military numbers, but... Trade wing? Trade wing. You greedy mother ducker. I mean, he can That's do not it. Like a trade wing has been, has been buffed. Instead of getting only three traders in Imperial age, he's getting five. And, oh, well, we've been here before, Wham. I think it's becoming a bit predictable this time. They've already got an army waiting for him to break through, and I wouldn't be surprised if they let him come through to his death. Yeah, as a Mangano there as well, so all the archers are not going to be able to really push forward here. Pushes them back. Engagement comes in. Yeah, he knows. He just can't take the fight at all. No chance in hell. Yeah. Meanwhile, north side, there's a raid coming in again. Now, I really do hope Blade's Walls went up, because if Blade's Walls did not go up, he's in peril. Looks like he oh, did the keep. Okay, it's only two knights going towards that keep, so that keep is going to go up. Well, he keep the opening, though. He says, okay, well, you can have the castle, but I'm going to have the kingdom. He'll ride into the back, and I'm sure there's plenty of poor, innocent villagers waiting to be sacrificed there, just like there is over here. Stone Wall's now also being dropped here by Yui, and behind this, I mean, now they have full control of all the sacred sites. Mm-hmm. And that's going to cost him deal. I think it's 10 villages going down, but might be a return favor here as Louis makes his way in. Tech up now also on the way for Louis. So that's going to be double imp versus solo. Hi, Armory. That is so strong in team games because if one player just like spams out 20 of these really cheap rams that also have a ton of HP, do a lot more damage than normal rams, it's incredibly tough for the players to deal with. Yeah, it's a like, huge edge, even more so than usual, uh, usual if this turns into a slow slog with spring ones as well, right? It's not just the extra two tile range, it's 2.5 extra. So a stinger, the blade needs to resolve soon. I wouldn't be surprised they pivot attention on the blade to crumple his economy. That's right. Yeah, High Armory has been rushed up quite fast here. Already got it now. Yeah, Louis peeling back for a moment. Well, he knows he's outnumbered in the night count, but now blade realizes how much on the clock he is. Trebs are at least getting through the castles, and it seems that Yui is allowing them to crumble. Doesn't even want to try to keep them up. There's Kaya Tower going up from, uh, from Blade. I'm I'm wondering why, because you do have a teammate which can make stone wards for you. So a big benefit from this Kaya Tower is immediately gun. <laughs> gun good, yes, but like they need to protect the trade with that gun, and also to your point, yes, your teammate can build stone walls, Crackity, but when has he come over to do that recently? True. Fair, fair point. That's still definitely says, hurts going uh, with the Skaya against the uh, against the uh, um, armory. Oh, is that that's that person who says that they're your friend, but they only come to see you like once a year, and it's always to borrow your iPod. I don't know why you're still using <laughs> iPods, but 
I mean, personally, I've long switched to Zune. It's just I, superior. Am I just getting old to the point that someone in chat's going to say, what is an iPod? Maybe. What was the argument back in the day for the iPod? It's just like a cell phone without a cell phone functionality. I, cell phone was just the apps. Right? Yeah, add more storage and then shuffling. Ooh. Hmm. <laughs> Well, these guys are shuffling back and forth on the map, and you can feel it. It's keeping Wham and Blade dancing back and forth. And as a result, they're starting to lose ground at the center. Yeah, the Rams taking down that keep now as well. And I mean, the archers, not good, the best unit to deal with uh, with the Rams there. Villagers were trying to burn that down. Did get taken down, though. And keep. Nine go. Uh, stays alive here for a moment. Yeah, maybe two moments. This is going to be it, only for a moment. For Sky Town, the backside, however, is proving to be a worthwhile investment to protect their trade down the line. <laughs> Castle is going to be gone. Matt Lots Simmons. of knights right now out on the field for Blade. Like, Blade has over 40 knights, and there's <laughs> wait, wait. a total of zero knights on the other side. What was that for? Oh, my God. I think Blade, did he use, a, like, an all-army select there? Like, those gremlins would have got the Maganel, right? Oh, yeah, I think, I think so. That's a big whoopsie, and not just that, even bigger whoopsies is he's still going to lose his own siege while trying to protect it. Uh, it means that the keep is going to be alive for quite a bit longer, it means that Blade doesn't want to quite engage right now. He has so many knights. I mean, if he just goes into the mid-map, he mm. could help out Wham so much, even if he just sends like 50 knights in. I think he's paranoid about leaving himself exposed. His Maganel is going to expose itself, though, as the Lancers just casually ride past the front line and take out the siege. It's a fun that they're yeah, not being held hostage. Wham says he doesn't need the knights from uh, Blade. He's making his own knights right now. And now these Blades got uh, <laughs> knights have elite status with Boyer's Fortitude. He's going to have to be careful about the fight, though. So. Camel Riders because... are mitigating a lot of this damage. However, that is too few on the count of hand cannoneers to hold. Yeah, hand cannoneers did get taken down. More on the way, but only four at a time getting trickled in here. As the Camel Riders, though, it's, it's almost like a bait. You waste time taking out the hand cannoneers, and you get massacred by the camels from behind. Like, I can already see, like, this feels like he's lost half of the knights already. He's about to lose yeah, half definitely a lot of knight numbers have gone down here so far. Needs to fight more damage on the economy. Cannot take the fight against the army. I mean, the problem is also, you lose these knights. Those traps that you've been trickling out are going to get blitzed. Whew, that was a stinger on the way through from the boiling oil. Food is an issue, though, and I believe we're looking at Blade's perspective here. Yeah, I mean, he does have a good farm oh, position Louis. right now. But he, oh, okay, it is okay. Louis. And I mean, Louis, that's that's kind of a point that we made earlier, right? He did need to make a farm transition. Um, the pro scouts only gets you so far into the game now. But the camels, they've, they, they've done a really, really good job here. Now, camels did get buffed recently. They cost a lot less food now, mm -hmm. quite a bit less gold as well. They're really nice units to spam in the late game, just because the gold cost has been reduced drastically. Man, I, I'm noticing that Louis is ahead of what's happening on the other side. I'm pretty sure Louis has been insulated in trade for a little bit now. So his count, like, you know, he, it's not... You look at that number of 56, it looks insane. If it was one player, that's two players. They both have been getting deep into the world of global economy. I think that's what Yeah, lots is. of trade going there, going on there right now. <laughs> and the Rams. I mean, <laughs> he talked about this. Yeah, that's the thing, right? High armory Rams, they, they're built differently. Can we compare the two Rams right next to each other? I mean, we might have an opportunity to. It's, it's vile to look at. I mean, I almost feel like we shouldn't. But you can look at Yui's RAM and then look at these. So 420. But like almost the you know the perfect number. Don't have the don't have the upgrade yet. Okay. From the looks of it. But 420 is a good number. <laughs> it definitely is. But yeah, I mean the the RAM tech as well with the high armory also means that the RAMs heal themselves up. They're not being attacked. They're just gonna heal for like two HP every second. The trade's been spotted in their base, and I'm also just like, these, these camels have just been carousing. You're starting to see the annoyance of these walls that were set up by Yui, cost him to lose additional knights when trying to get out of a sticky situation. Streltsy, now also being made by Blade, but Streltsy do take a long time to mess up, and can, I mean, they're relatively cheap compared to hand candies, but they still take a long time to mess up. We have to consider the edge that the Louis might be given by staying in knights here as well. You're, you're seeing what they're holding there, right? The axes, the pole arms. They've got the what used to be the sabers. So I believe it's the plus four damage. Yeah, plus four damage, yeah. which is quite, quite nice. But both players do have those. Yeah, but one player's moving away from knights into those Strelzi, right? True, but quick true. And then at that point, like, who's your front line here is what I'm also concerned about. Because, like, Wham's only pushing horsemen and they will get massacred by these camels. 
maybe Strolls is a front line as well, since they do now <laughs> uh, have their melee damage oh, of course. be a little bit buff. It'll be, so it'll be uh, Bardichus versus Poleaxes here in the Roost Civil War. They are cheaper than a knight. That's true. And I was promised uh, a war amongst the Roost, so we're going to get it either way. Just pushing though. I, I mean, it is yeah, a war it. that is being won right now for Louis Yui. I, you're on the farms at this stage. And Strozzi are yeah. not cheap in that regard either. Yeah, no more food income, or rather very, very weak food income now for Blade means that he's not going to be able to just produce them anymore. And yeah, I feel like at this point, the game looks to be slowly coming to an end now. It feels inevitable. They never got that full wall in, right? Like, I think it was always just the, the Palisade walls, which is another interesting detail, right? Blade did go for this Spaskaya. Spaskaya that protected the corner, but I don't know what was meant to protect the rest of this map. Yeah, it looks like Wham is going to try and come over here now to help Blade out, but at this point, so many villagers have come down. They're now actually below 200 villagers overall between them. And, and they're tricking in. Still, look, yeah, look. it's so many units out. They GG out. They, they don't know what we knew. 80 traders in total between Louis and Yui. And just like that, they trade out beautifully to get a second point on the board. Quickly on their way towards a 3-0 sweep if they can do it once more. Let's not count Blade and Wham out yet. We saw it in the last set as well, where we were 2-0 at one point, then suddenly 2-2. And uh, it's been going on for, for quite a while there. <laughs> Why are you doing but this yeah, to yourself? This, this, <laughs> I mean, I mean there's, there's hoping for some, for potential for, like, comeback, right? I mean, these yes. games have been close so far. Let's not kid ourselves. These, ga these games have been close so far, but we could definitely see how Yui and Louis, they just had such a great synergy so far in the in their set. I mean, it started with the first uh, minute on play, just the strategy behind it, and it worked out really, really well for them there in this game as well. Yeah, I think they're really impressive at peeling their opponents, right? That's something that we noticed in game one. It's happened again in game two. Even when their opponents had a good position in mid-game, they find a way to split the map. And when they go for that, that full cav comp with uh, a complementary battalion of hand cannoneers, it just forced this almost unwinnable dynamic. Like, I don't know about you, but I felt like the second half of that game was Blade running around his own base trying to do something and Wham trying to go on the offensive alone, right? And it just made them easy to 1v2. Yeah, exactly. I also felt like Blade at one point, he had a really, really good knight count. He was at like 45 knights and he even got the elite upgrade. But then he decided to trade them in against the uh, against the camel riders and against the hand cannoneers from his opponents. And instead of just trying to go into the back of the base, cause eco damage, that kind of was a throwaway of the army there for him. Okay. And after that, it just felt really hard for him to mess back up. But now we see our next set here. An interesting no matchup. Yeah, no, well, half a mirror, right? Malian's on each side. <laughs> But I'm already thinking back to a, a series you had earlier, a very weird one, the way the Delhi integrated with, with Mongols that was in that one. But I'm, I'm thinking, is, is this something like Keshik's expected on one side, but if we mass like your standardized Malians with the Ghazi Raiders, you can't win? I think I actually do want to see Malians just going for all in sofa play. And then the Delhi Sultanate going for the, uh, for the archers there. I think it just still makes sense. Like, sure, Ghazi are nice. They deal bonus damage, and that's obviously amazing. But I still feel like with the Tower of Victory, it's just so strong with a 20% more attack speed. It just makes a big, big difference overall. And uh, also having infantry allows you to, like, wall in the field and getting walls around the sacred sites in the middle. Also really, really nice. And Marlians, like, really, the mass sofa uh, gameplay from them with the Falani Corral has been so massively buffed in the upgrade, uh, in the update that we had recently. Yeah, I can really, really imagine that because I've been on the receiving end of the Mali and Mars sofa in team games, in our practice games. <laughs> it is really, really strong. I can imagine. I, it, we, we've seen the, the power it can even have in 1v1s, right? I'm reminded of what happened uh, on the previous weekend in the Elite Classic, right? The, the things that B was able to do in just a 1v1. Uh, the sofa numbers just get kind of absurd. Um, so... By the way, just a reminder for people who are like, it's getting pretty late. Only on the second series. Well, we thought of that. Uh, we come up with a solution. The way this is going to play out is to kind of keep things going. I believe Divine, DFP, and Kiljardi uh, versus Nyan, Racing Cat, and Chrysor is already underway or going to very shortly be underway. And what's going to happen is after we're done with this set, we'll be hopping straight into uh, Feasty versus Uverly, your final set of the day.
if that series ends up being fast and this one ends up being fast, what we'll do is we'll then double back and check in on that third series. But otherwise, it'll be a free series day because if we are talking about that length, I think you would have definitely got your worth of entertainment. I mean, we're already five and a half hours into a broadcast. We're only in the second series. Yeah, it's been quite a couple of, ga uh, of games so far in the first set, especially that kind of dragged this out quite a bit longer than initially expected. We'll just say that much. Uh, yeah, him. the first set taking four hours itself. Uh, I bloody, I, I'm a, I'm a call it now. I warned him. <laughs> I was like, those team games could be very long. As the four best of eyes of the day, like the team game averages in practice have been lower than than the uh, the one v ones. I was like, ah, okay. Uh, so don't fret. We'll still we'll still see Beefy versus Urkely today. Yes, we will indeed. <laughs> Blimey. But before we get to that, we really have to focus on what's ahead of us. Wham and Blade backs up against the wall. We mentioned a few of the dynamics here. Delhi, what they want to go for. Mongols in the mixer. Do you give an edge to one of these two comps? Uh, tough to say. Really tough to say. Now, it's not Dry River. So I I like that Wham and Blade are conserving um, Delhi for potential Dry River at some point in time. <sighs> you know, I'm... It's really even. It is really, really even. I think it all comes down to how the Malians player is going to play. If one of the Malians player goes for, like, uh, Mass... <sighs> Just the just the mass warrior scouts early on, and then into constellation, and then archers, and if the other Malian player just heavily doubles down on the sofa play, that's all where it comes down to for me. Yeah, it is a little bit surprising with Dry River in the rotation that the Delhi were not safe for there. To your point, I mean, maybe there's a concern that they just don't like mirrors. Maybe there is this kind of surprising strategy. We talked about the idea of like a double cav. We saw that attempted yesterday by the Free Decline. It did not work. It can be risky especially against the sieves you're facing off against. But let's say, for example, Mongol player doesn't open up with a Rax. Maybe you feel like you can get away with double cav? Yeah, it could be, but still, like, double cav is always so risky, and especially with Malians in, in the game, where they have, like, the Donzo, the best spearman in the game. Sure. I don't, I don't think you want to risk it. And yeah. for Remba, it's also really easy to switch into, like, other infantry units. I'm just trying to make sense of the Delhi not being saved Dry River, but I'm sure they're about to make sense for us. Time for game number three between Blam and Louis Yui. And here we go. We got Yui Metal and Louis MT playing the Malians and the Delhi in the pink and the red. On the other side, we have Team Blam <laughs> consisting of the Mongols and the Malians here. We've played a playing while. on Rocky Canyon. Yeah, Blade and Wham, Blam. Or also known as uh, Blade 01 or Wham 555555. Five, 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 they five, have many names. Uh, there's also, what was it, Wade is the other one. Yeah, well, They've got a list of names. They, they they have aliases because they are top level players. All the, the fans, the celebrities chase them. So whenever they arrive in a country, you have to give them a different alias name. So people don't know. You did just see that correctly. They aren't the biggest chads in the world in this game series. They had the two in front of them. But no, they are the ones with their back up against the wall. They have won zero games so far in this best of five. Yeah, match point here for Yui and Louis. So they're looking good right now. They're looking good. Blade starts off with the... I mean, that, that's also really nice, right? The Mongols against the uh, Malians. And we do see Louis reacting to that. He is making a barracks, which is being blocked by the sheep right now. Just going to be a little bit long. There we go. Barracks getting dropped right now. <laughs> and you do have to be careful, uh, careful when playing the Malians against the Mongols because they are able to get a lot of value out of burning your houses. Not only are your houses weaker, they have a lot less HP, they only cost 25 wood. How much bounty does a Mongol player get when they burn down a building? Double. <laughs> it's not a bad trade, right? Um, they did buff the Malian houses a while back, right? I think they gave them an extra 100 health compared to what they used to be. So that Mongol strategy is an opening. Although it still had some value, it lost some of its insta-wallop. Yeah, initially they only buffed up the health of the pit mine, then after a while, they had to circumvent. We're like, well, houses actually are still quite, quite, quite squishy. And here we go now. Yui, uh, Louis, rather, he is respecting the Mongols here in this game. Does up for the Donzos. I like that play. Makes a lot of sense. Does delay him a little bit. Also means that he doesn't have immediately uh, six houses on that pit mine. But it's better to be safe here than sorry. Especially if you're playing as the Malians, where you want to be the one disrupting your opponent. You don't want to be the one getting disrupted. Exactly. 
And well, the cool thing about the way that Louis played this is he's in a position where you know, he possibly doesn't even have to worry about getting the defensive landmark up. Instead, he can be greedy, which you feel like you need to in the Mali mirror of this, because you can already see Wham is building the Mansa. Yeah, and it looks like Yui, he's not going to be the one going for Archers here as he's building the Dome of the Faith. So this looks to be a Ghazi kind of approach here from Yui Metal. And the problem with that, of course, is Blade did already open up with, sp uh, with the Spits, right? So that is a variable already on the table. But I guess the logic is we can play away from them, right? We can divide and conquer here because their bases are quite far apart. Yeah, now Blade, he has to fall back. The Donzos are really, really strong in this one. I think he could almost just cancel the Spearman that he still has in Q and just look for a faster age up because you're not going to be fighting against the Donzos anyways, right? You just can't take the fights there. And Louis, he has invested a lot into these Donzos. So in theory, if Blade just goes up behind that, he's going to be ahead of uh, Louis when it comes to the age up time, but didn't set shoes to go for these uh, plus two Spearmen here right now. I think he's got Javelin to take pull home, again yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. So, got to be careful with your blade there. You'll find yourself down before you can even get the tech upgrade. More houses now, of course, being added in is the benefit for Louis now that he's secure in his own base. That Dome of Faith we talked about. Let's talk about other options here, right? Like, Garzi Raiders seems the most obvious. Is there anything else you could, you could see him thinking here? Is there any greedy play for a Delhi player with this build? Last Castle in team games, very, very rarely. Um... Like, you need to make some kind of units there in order to get up. Silver Tree coming out here from Blade. But yeah, I think... I can't see any other reason why he would go um, the Dome of the Faith if it wasn't for Ghazi Raiders. Like, Ghazi Raiders are the only unit that don't really benefit in the Feudal Age from the Tower of Victory. Mm -hmm. It would strike me as really odd if after he made the Dome of the Faith, now goes into Archers. I'm wondering if there's like a... The other thought behind the double cat play is like, obviously the Ghazi Raiders is one element, but then also the fact that you're going to be pumping extra Scholars doesn't just allow you to freely go for Sacred Sites because you have mid-map control usually. It's also kind of this discount Abbey of Kings, right? When you come back to the Delhi base, pop out a bunch of Scholars, and it's almost like you've got fresh units. Interesting thing right now. Wham is making some Javelin throws, and could we potentially see a composition here of Kashik and Javelin throws? Oh. I, mean, I quite like that. The high base damage of yeah, Javelin Throws. Nice. Yeah, like they, they pretty much take on any unit at a decent level, in my opinion. Yeah, and also thinking about in like long term, Blade goes for trade behind that. He's going to be able to, if things get a little bit dicey here for Wham, be able to supply him with gold. Interesting dynamics. Like, the other thing, you know, like, this, this is the thing you always have to keep in mind. Remember, folks, if you ever get confused, the, the one with fishing is the one that doesn't have trade. The one without fishing is the one that has trade. So, someone they're going to have to scout for. It's something that both sides should be aware of because there was already Malians on each side. And as we know, Malian trade is a vile beast in this game. Yeah, Malian trade can be absolutely disgusting. I don't think we're going to be seeing this anytime soon, though. And now Archer Range also being added here from Louis. So it could be that we're also seeing Javelins from him. Now, I'm a big fan, in theory, of the, like, the mass Javelin play in team games. Just going to be really difficult to mass them up. Your economy balance has to be quite a bit different compared to what you would usually go for when you're making um, Archers. Also, have to scale your production a little bit earlier because Javelin throws take quite a while to produce in comparison to Archers, at least. Yeah, and you got to be well positioned as well. you got the extra range, but you know, if you find yourself unguarded by some spears for any second in this game, you know these Ghazi Raiders will run you through. Yeah, the bonus damage on the Ghazi Raiders definitely does make a big difference there. House gets torched, does catch on fire, but should be easily able to repair. Is he going to check the... Co if he spots this silver tree, Blade's plan may just go up in smoke. He is sending his spearmen after those. It looks so like for now, though. these units are just circling around there. And you, you say that. Okay, he's come back around. He's, he's starting to pivot off for a sec. So timing just about works out for Blade. I mean, that was probably more close than he was comfortable with. You can see he was chasing after a bit panic for a moment there. But for Ember, in the meantime, coming from Wham. So going to have to trade from Blade as well as the castle up from Wham. Meanwhile, on the other side, Louis, where are we at with this? Because you, know, you built four Donzos. You feel, built a few arches. You feel like he should be close himself. 
Yeah, should definitely be for a garrison going up here now. But actually, he's got a lot of villagers on wood. He's all in in feudal by the looks of it. Like third production building like that. Not something you see often when you're rushing for Rimba. So this might catch him off guard. He at least gets a raid in. There's a little bit of frustrating for Blade. Still doesn't know about the trade. Probably you can always do it. Like if you know that there's not going to be Yammer on the units, you always know, okay, that's, that's got to be trade somewhere. But he didn't check towards the primary base is the concern there, right? And I believe that... Did he have a scout with the Ghazi? He doesn't, right? He lost his scout. So. He did. Yeah, he did, but it's gone now. Okay. No more scout for him. He's actually remaking it. Good idea. Oh, he's sniffing it out. I believe that might be a villager who just built an outpost and is... Well, sadly for them, out in no man's land. Oh, hello, yeah, honey. Yeah, metal is paying a 10... Isn't paying attention. It's paying to that. attention to uh, something else right now. Yeah, that you're correct, Crackety. <laughs> uh, numbers are building right now for um, there's, Yui Louis. There is no bloody way. Like, there is no way that he doesn't know this trait. There's no way that he did not see that. Like, what was Yui he looking at? Have, he must have, at the very least, seen the outpost there. I hope so, because that that is a humongous detail to miss out. <laughs> Um, Gazi Raiders chasing Kashrix there. <laughs> Let me add him. Let, it's like Scrappy Do right now. You just pull him back, like, no, this is not a fight you want. Don't take this fight, please. That's like one of the scenes in Scooby Doo where they're like in a hotel um, and like everybody's just running from door to door. All of a sudden, the bad <laughs> guy is uh, getting chased by the good guys. Oh, yeah, like, this may have been a mistake. Get out, get out, get out. Well, he's being annoying. Like, this Kashrix mass is escalating, but they. The cool thing from this is he's actually kept them all in the base while the rest of their army combined takes the mid-map. I'm worried right now for uh, Louis. He just doesn't have the military right now. He does have a couple of Donzos, has a couple of archers, but Wham with the Faremba is going to be able to scale his military really, really quickly. I really, I'm still, I, I'm, I'm on board with you. I don't know what Louis's overarching goal was with this. It almost fe felt like an overreaction to the early spear presence from the Mongol player. And then a, a kind of lingering as a result. I mean, I guess this is the the point for him is like a delayed trigger logic is get all the cattles up now. I like this. If it's going to be the Falani Corral behind this. Yeah. And we could potentially see like the Mars sofa play here. Agreed. Oh, Ghazi Raider is getting a good hit here. I, can Actually, you lose one of them. I mean, can you... Okay, now he has to run. I, I think this is still a fight like Yui could turn and fight. He could probably snipe the, the Keshiks out if he wants, but showing a lot of respect. There is a raid coming in towards the base of red. It's just going to be the scout. Don't worry. Don't panic, guys. But yeah, I agree <laughs> on the, the Fulani Corral. It makes a lot of sense why he went triple production building now. Yeah, it makes sense, right? Even with like triple production building, makes me even more sure that it's going to be Fulani Corral. And then just the potential with all the food that you're going to get. It's so big. It's like basically you get that landmark up and you immediately have the economy as if you had a second TC for like the past five minutes. Yui is buying so much time with these players. It costs them a little bit, sure, but the, the advantage play, the fact that they've kept them off the greed play behind this, it's finally on its way up, Grand Fulani Corral. And at the same time, Yu Metal also aging up, so double age up coming in now, and this could be a really, really nice switch here when it comes to the compositions as well. Yui, I don't think he wanted to take that fight. This is definitely one he can no longer win. Ooh. Yeah, he's just running for now. Wait. No. no. Okay. One that, thing that, 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 that could be problematic here is, like, if I'm Blade and I see that I've got that numerical vibe, do I not just peel off a few Keshiks and go hunting now? Because you don't need that many to I defend, mean, right? You definitely don't. You definitely don't. I feel like it's definitely a lot of paranoia here from Blade at the moment. Mm -hmm. Just wanting to make sure that his trade absolutely doesn't get harassed or um, delayed at all. To be fair, like five, six Keshex, uh, Ghazi Raiders, they can take down traders really, really quickly. And you can't let it happen that they run around in the back line. And Keshex are always really, really slow. So it feels like you have to put in multiple Keshex, Keshex groups yeah. in order to be able to make up for that uh, difference in mobility. Especially Ghazi being like this, just been splitting them off. Yui, instead of keeping one big clump, he's now started to just send them off like the Scooby-Doo gang looking for clues. Well, they are coming back with everything that they need to know. And more. Keshik's finally reacting there. Meanwhile, an attempt to breach the walls of Pink's base, but Yui in position with an army to respond if need be. 
A good bit of villagers have gone down there so far, so on the goal, damage has been done. Now archers are going to be here on the front lines for both players. Lots more archers though from Ram for now. At the same time, Ghazi raided from the back, but there are some Donzos there ready yeah. to intercept. But that kind of sacrificed the, the main fight here, right? Like when he peeled back the Spearman, but there was a commitment by Red, it meant that he had cannon fodder to get an edge. But still hesitance out of Louis to keep taking that engagement. He's waiting for Lancers to arrive. And arrive they do, and now it's going to be time for Wem to get out again. With the Lancers here, it's going to be tough for him to engage. Now he still oh. has the Don's nose. Oh, Lancers overstepping. Guy's getting a bit ahead of himself. Like, I've teched up. We're the strongest in the... No, not quite. Another oh, catch Decap. <gasps> Decap actually came through. And now Villagers are a little bit exposed here. Just a tiny bit. I don't need Scholars. whoop to do right? You've got Dome of Faith. But the, the idle time alone, the fact that you're being blocked off of those deer now and potentially access to keeps is quite irksome for Yui after this tech up. Exactly. Can we take a quick look at how Louis has scaled his uh, Falani Corral so far? So he's still making more and more of these uh, cattle there. That's going to give him a good amount of food income there. Relic's also being taken behind this. He needs to add more production buildings, it feels like. Like six production buildings right now with all of the cattle that he has. Probably not enough. Yeah, I mean, you, you could tech up, but I think there's more value in you playing a long castle here. Poison arrows. Definitely stinging on those caches. They can't outheal that, that's for sure. Spimmon also now being trickled in. But movement speed arrow is going to be engaged. So Wham just trying to gap close. But no chance. Louis sidesteps it perfectly. These are still Feudal Age archers. So it's uh, Feudal Age uh, Kashyyyk. So they can't really take a fight against Poison Arrow archers right now from Louis. And Louis, he's still really scaling his production right now. Still making only archers. I wish we could see him make just a couple of sofas right now. He has the additional food eco, so he should definitely make use of that. I feel like Blade should be teched up by now. Like, that's 18 traders. You'd definitely. think that that would be enough. Yeah, he definitely should be. And he's also making units, which have the same cost as what you need in order to go for an age up. So <laughs> could be coming in sometime soon here. Yeah, the cash account was cancelled, right? He stayed at 15. So Kurotai now on there we the go. way. Of course, that'll give him a way of healing the Keshiks outside of them having to constantly pummel things, which has been difficult for him with the way he's been being kited in this early game. Mm hmm. Found that Yui getting some relics. Wham looks to be able to deny this one from being taken. Just get Stealth as far as he can. Potentially, so. nah, it's not going to be enough. Nah, just keep running. You know you're dead. Just get it as far away from your opponents as possible. Of course, the big edge the Delhi have out of all the sieves in this matchup, right? That tech up scholars should already be in place. Clearly part of the bigger plan with the Dome of Faith. Yeah. I mean, the Relic is now a little bit closer, so another um, Monk can definitely pick that up quite a bit easier than before. Looking at the Eco right now, I mean, Wham and Blade, they still have the benefit of the trade right now, for sure. But something that doesn't really get highlighted here in their graph is the cattle that Yui has access to. And that's a lot of bonus food that he's getting right now. Can we take a quick look at the income, the food income from Louis? At the moment, I think he only is getting food right now from the cattle. It looks like it. Yeah, I don't see anyone working. Any so none about close to a thousand passive food. Yeah, a thousand food, completely passive. No units on there. All the wood that he's getting, he's pumping into archers, and he's actually overtaken Wham when it comes to the archer oh, count. That's a bait. That's a bait. Blue realizes it as well. They were trying to peel him through the forest. Yui was waiting. Losses on the exit. Attempt to get a wall up is going to be a big fat L for Wham. Archer's at least able to scare them off for the time being with the toxins. Purple Tie is moving towards the middle, or rather it's stationary towards that, the middle. It's kind of abandoned right now. I think he's got a Keshik line behind this. Almost like they're towards trying to the bait middle. them in. Yeah, but right now with the Curl Tie out of position, the most important unit that you want to benefit from Curl Tie is going to be the Archer's here from Wham. Mm -hmm. And I like the way that they kind of like stuck their foot in it, right? Like, no, 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 I'm not letting these two armies come together. But they do have to retreat in the end, so... Blade will now be able to move it across and begin that slow crawl towards the enemy base. But I'm wondering what they're going to have by the time you arrive. We have to remember that Yui did go House of Learning. So he should have the Honed oh. Blades or almost have it by now. He's even adding an I'm elephant. Seeing, I'm seeing a war, yeah, the War Elephant. I like that. I really, really do like that. War Elephant's just having so much HP. They're such an efficient frontline there. Um, looks like Yui also got the tech where he is able to put villagers out of houses. Hone Blade, though, That's a little bit late in the queue there. Is it me, or is that a very surprising order of things? Like, Hone Blade's not just 
being so late, but also... I think he just went over the keyboard and pressed, like, QW. Yeah, yeah, he just stroked it like it's a piano for the first time. Because he's also... The thing we have to keep in mind is if you check the house learning, the far right tech is also... I'd say it's the second best behind home blades now. Yeah, I do really like the the house one. Um, just being able to save your villagers and houses yeah. makes a big difference. And especially, like, you don't, like, with Delhi, you many, many times you find yourself with your base not being fully walled. And having that access and just being able to put your villagers inside of houses and then the houses also shooting arrows at your opponent's units, yeah. it's really, really strong. And I love that, having that technology in the game. I agree, but I'm always like, you know, home blades is kind of dead, but obvious, right? But I've really like yeah. gravitated towards hearty rations, the extra five carry capacity. It's huge. You basically get to do what the HRE do. Yeah. That's a lot of cash X right now out on the field, looking to move over towards, uh, towards the map of Louis. Louis does have a good count of Gonzos right now, though. And I mean, that's the big thing. Because he went for the Grand Fulani Corral, he has so much food that he can easily afford like these big big amount of production buildings right now and there's a fight Wait, coming fight. out and when well, he's a little bit alone oh the keshiks they went north they chased off the space oh no oh no no no! and, and if those spears turn around i mean they can still take a bunch of you with them so there we go the brace comes out they are going to be overwhelmed but in the meantime wham forced to be in full retreat does reach the curl tie that'll assist him he needs to be careful to not allow that wrap around by yui yui body oh, blocked down by the keshiks remember curl yeah, tie in effect here much. Through. With the curl tie, it's such a big game changer. The curl tie as in well. team games. Yeah, the, the yeah. yam network now in there, so the Keshit can keep just weaving in and out. But really, Wham has done a phenomenal job of keeping as many archers alive as he did, but they get pushed back past the curl tie. They no longer have the buff, and now not only are they at risk of losing the main battle, but this is where trade upon is going on. This is trade central. Yeah, the knights do get pretty much taken out completely though from you, and now the Keshit have returned, and that's a large number. The Donzos get completely overwhelmed. They're swarmed on. They can't stay there. I mean, the elephant's like, yep, guys, I'm out. Oh, okay, I'm going to leave. Now people remember why you don't really build elephants in big maps. Keshik's chasing in. This is the worst time. They're about to go back underneath the cruel tie. Oh. Yeah, this hurts a ton. Louis has to fall back here. I mean, the elephants, they do a good amount of bonus damage there to the Keshik's, but they do. if it gets focused down, I, it's I gonna be really, really tough to replenish. Is it me, now it's, or did uh, Blade just overextend there? He yeah, he definitely did. Everything essentially. Like, he's down to what ten Keshiks in total in the game. Less, in fact, he's gonna lose the entire army. Second wave from Yui baits him in, and the Archer Mass still looking great from Louis, despite the Cruel Tie buff. It doesn't feel like it's enough. Yeah, it's just so many Archers there. Forty more Archers compared to what Wham has out on the field right now. And the Grand Falana Corral just proving to be a really, really strong landmark here right now. It looks like Wham behind this is shifting into sofas. I'm not sure about that play though. <laughs> it's just without the, the Grand Falana Corral. <laughs> the elephant that just wants to help. Okay, you let him out. That's the best part about team play, Crackity, is how your teammates can trap your units. <laughs> But bloody hell, I mean, the elephants, I, I think you're right, they did make a difference. And also, like, the, the Grand Fulani Corral, big. But more more so than that, the biggest thing for me is the, the coordination out of Yui and Louie. These strats, we mentioned coming into this, that people shouldn't sleep on these guys. They might cheer for the Whams, your BCs, Marine Lords, but these guys, I think they easily have the most team experience out of anyone in this tournament. Yeah. Known as Team of Fat Penguin, they definitely, they're definitely in a fat position when it comes to their experience. <laughs> and that Kurotai, that fat buff, is about to uh, go slim fast, shall we say? It's on fire. It's not being repaired. I, <laughs> once that goes down, I mean, you don't want to call GG because it's the final game, but I don't see how you fight without it. Yeah, forward position is now being fortified with the keep here. Not a compound of defender keep, but still a keep nonetheless. Means that there is going to be a very nice position to fall back to at any point in time. That they're unlikely to, to get pushed back from. No. Look at the hill. That's actually, like, that's quite steep. Mm -hmm. I mean, these, these keeps on the front line. All this stone. Like, I, I can't help but feel you're about to be contained. This is why the map is called Rocky Canyon. Well, because... Louis Yui are going to rock your world, of course, in the gang. Yeah, that too. Oh, great brawler. I saw that. Coming out now. Nice, switching up. For the Huntress. Oh, come on. <laughs> the Great Brawler is so good now. It is, but think about his comp. It doesn't serve him, right? Because he's, he's just 
basically an army of archers. Yeah, but I mean, the archers aren't going to get stealth from that distance. That's true, but it's like it's just a keep, right? My thought is like, Grill Barra, you're thinking the siege, right? Yeah. He's making Musafati warriors now. Maybe that's the plan behind it, mm. getting the Musafati warrior stealth, and with that, the bonus attack. We're back, boys. Let's let's get every bit of this. War. <laughs> Look, guys, if you just that one villager, by the way, has been here for the last like, several minutes. Like that man is a champion. Was a champion. Yeah, he he got impaled by 17 spears into brute, and yeah, gets taken down there. It's an interesting kebab, right? Venison and human meat, but I'm pretty sure that's what just happened there. White Stupa now on the way for blade. But it's definitely going to need it. But at the same time, Wham yeah. looks to be a oh. little bit exposed there in the back. And now traders. Shish kebabs. No way out of that. Easy peasy. He won't even get the gold drop off. He needs it. He's going to need to re remask Keshix after this fight. Siege traded out. Maganel's also exposed. If Louis, if Yui rather just go straight for it. And in the meantime, Yui now using the skulls on the front side to heal everyone up. Nice surround to protect the Maganels, but the Lance is still threatened. The chase in. Elephants oh, could easily shot. reach this. That yeah, big shot. mango shot though, and with the curl tide, the mangonels also get buffed up by quite a bit here. Archers also killing all the knights there. Archers will have to pull back a little here. Meanwhile, the elephants do get in. Maganel taken out, one will survive, and the pinch on the second elephant is successful. But folks, the trade is getting obliterated. Those Donzos have still been running around the backside, forcing a reaction out of Wham. Yeah, it looks like Wham, he did pull some archers over there. Donzo still taking some fights against the Archer Sandlers, but do get cleaned up now. Rewall has also been completed. With Stone Wars as well. Actually, it's We're not learning. been completed yet. It's, not, it's only a single villager. And they're moving towards that. The family owned the land, right? It was Timothy before him, and now Timothy's son takes over duties. It's his duty to keep everything up to par, up to scratch. But I've got a feeling he's going to be scratched off the realm of the living there by that army moving from Louis. His bones are going to be added to that wall the way it looks like as the units are moving towards that. Uh, this oh, key, keep. Th there's no way. There's no way you would yeah, get this. Yeah, that's getting tonight. He needs to micro onto the individual villagers. Okay, doesn't go for it, but Yui does pull back. Keep gets cancelled. Oh, hello. But now How's that wall going? <laughs> All right, son of Timothy. <laughs> first of his name, because no one else got called son of Timothy. Is dead. And with that, Louis now parks himself in the way of trade and blade. Well, he's going to struggle to get that catch. He needs to pull the traders back. Mm -hmm. With the traders, the way it works now, you can just pull them back. Oh, yeah. And true. they're not going to lose the gold. Well, they might lose their life, though. I don't think they've been pulled back quick enough. He hasn't actually, he didn't have the outposts fully in range, right? So we'll lose one or two more. The dive will continue. It's a backstab away from the cruel tie, but a counter offensive underway from Blade as he makes his way into Louis' base. Yeah, it's a lot of exposed farming going on here, so. Definitely a lot of damage to be done there. Louis at the same time still pushing into the base of this Blade. This is an awkward but... fight. Yeah, the army from Wham is here and all the Dunces are going to go down. And once they will go down, the Keshex are going to be free to attack the Archers. They're a little you bit hasty right now. Yeah, the Archers yeah. are still holding well. Like, this trade is still decent in a 2v1 situation. Louis is cleaning up practically all the Keshex and the Archers. They're not even close to being in range. Yeah, the knights, are the Keshex, Wait, rather, are the they do get taken out. <laughs> oh, God. He didn't stop them. Oh, no. And keep in mind the amount of Keshex he just lost Crackety, right? So now you just chase in. Even if you eventually lose the army, you trade it out favorably here. Yeah, and behind this, Louis and Yui, they've also started trading. They are on 14 traders right now, and they're catching up. Well, Raids are going to try to shut that down from Blade. That's just really all the, the Keshex he has left right now. He's trying to reboom them. Archers. Look at the military from Yui right now. Like he has, he has three elephants. What, what Yui? Like, he really wants to be Imperial Age. I'm guessing. Like what? I'm, I'm <laughs> flabbergasted right now. What? What's is that? The three elephant play? Yes. Just like you know, ten stables, mass elephants. They they seem to do all right for themselves last time, right? Right. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if it was like fifteen elephants by three elephants. They don't, they don't seem too convincing now. More traders getting killed here. You know what makes it funny is like Louis is the one doing the micro in the mass here, so you'd understand if he was behind on production. Yui's not here, so what has Yui's attention grabbed so firmly that his army is five units big? 
I am really confused right now. The production is just not there for oh. Huey and there's just barely any units, but they could get all the siege. Louis, there's, there's nothing to yeah, guard. Yeah, it's completely closed. Louis so says, many guns, but these are tanky. They are. Unlike the siege, Maganel is going to be stabbed down, bombard, slow to retreat, but should be able to get behind the Keshik. So they they save some of the premium. It's still a more expensive fight than it should have been. Yeah, a couple of Kashyyyks that get hurt as well. Oh, there's Yui's entire been... army. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the three elephants, man. This is... <laughs> <laughs> At 28 minutes As long as it gets game. the job done. And now behind this, Yui sends Louie a lot of gold. What? <laughs> is this like a late game kind of sling? Sure, but, this... but still. <laughs> I'm... That's even more gold. So, so the Delhi player is your eco player here. Like, no, like, no. <laughs> What's the pop count right now for for you? I wonder. Now he's going. To, okay, he's going go. into tower elephants now as well. So it's going to be full Elefanto fun time, and he's he's got enough time to do so. Louis by himself is just keeping both players busy. Wow. Yeah. So he that's... must have got hit hard then. Yeah. Yeah, he must have, or somehow he must have been idle big time. I mean, he still has 100 villagers, but... Do you reckon he had a toilet the... break in this, this game? I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I mean, Lu Louis has been such a dominant factor in this one. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Yeah, Louis is pretty much 1v2ing right now against these players. And now he's mixing in a ton of Musafati. Ooh. And these Musafati, he does have the... Uh, he does have the Huntress, uh, Fortress of the Huntress, right? So yes. if they're stealthed... The they do a lot of damage. Their first attack does like 30 damage, 30 bonus damage. It's no. like a hand cannon here shot. Dangerous times ahead though. So far, Louis has been able to even take on these archers due to the leap upgrade. But that's about to change. Wham, Fort the Huntress is about to complete. Timing is good for Louis to do some damage, but probably his last opportunity to get those favorable trades. Now it's going to be Marlin Imp versus Marlin Imp. The one thing that I see going here in the late game is that Mongols can trade for infinite stone. Mm -hmm. That is true. Oh, this castle, I, mm, I'm having my doubts. There are a lot of archers, but the villagers will have to get pulled here. They He's need not to pulling. get pulled back. All of them are dying. He's pulling our leg oh, on no. this one right now. There's no way the castle goes up. He'll clean up the army, but the price is gonna be high for Wav. The archers, it feels like it's taking, it's taking forever to clean up this <laughs> units. Like the units that are only light infantry. Well, they are still That's castle aged archers is the problem here, right? Like, so that extra health has made the difference. Yeah, it seems so. And Siege, once again, being left alone here. A can, can we get and a Yui at some point, please? Like, I'm just, every, every time it's red. How is he doing this? It's the Fulani Corral. What is that line the on the north? Is that the army? The next wave? Yeah, that's, that's just the <laughs> military production. Like, Louis, he has so much production right now, just pumping out so many units. It's nonstop. Like, this man is relentless. And, and the way he set himself up with the Fulani, with the fact they've added in trade, the fact he's a Malian, I, I don't see him ever drying up here. Behind that, Yui, he's preparing an army that can't be beat. Mass <laughs> elephants. Allegedly. We may need proof, especially against poison arrows. I'm, I'm not as confident about their survival. Don't forget the tower elephants have the highest pierce armor in the game, right? Yes, but it's they're literally it's only going to be poison arrows. It's only going to be poison yes. arrow damage coming in. Oh, you and they like, have a thousand HP. Louis like, oh, I'm here again. Time to stab down some more of these traders. Gets forced to deal with the catch instead. More slinging going on as Yui's like, I can't, I can't really keep up with you, so I'll just keep sending you resources to do what you're doing. In, in exchange, he's getting sent food now. So he can build a couple more elephants. So, so Yui's slinging. Yui's building the Great Wall of Yui. Like, <laughs> they really... It's like that modded game mode where one person can only do eco <laughs> things and the other can only do military things. Yui sends gold over to Louis, then Louis sends gold back over to Yui. Isn't that it looks money like laundering? Yui... Is it? Hmm. Because they are paying taxes for that every time. Well, yeah, that's how money laundering works, though. I don't want to give too much away, or I might like I might have someone knock on my door. But you got to wash the cash, Kraken. True, oh. true. It depends on where the money is from. Not. I mean, <laughs> it, as long as the the state gets their tax, they're happy, right? They don't mind. That's true. They look the other way. This is a shady business, but we don't care. As Yui is now finding his way up to Imperial Age. And we talked about this that this was going to start to be the point where 
Louis' raids become less effective. And you can see, before, he'd actually have taken out half his army. Now, like 10 units maybe he killed. Still incredibly impressive how well the Dunzos did there. They killed like 15 archers when they should have just died immediately. Kashuk raids, they've still been getting it. But where? Is the Great Wall of Yui a lie? Is it a, a project that we pump it's not millions completed. into? And it's still not complete? Fire yeah, I mean, the Malian oil princes, they've been pumping a lot of gold into that. <laughs> They're expecting a return on their investment within five years. I think it's finally complete, though. However, the price is going to be high upon them. There's a lot of Keshuks in their base. Yeah, but now Yui has finally aged <laughs> up. And with that, he's going to be getting some hand cannon elephants, man. These elephants, they... If Yui has been trying to chase down the Keshuks with elephants right now... And I can understand he, why he has. Person, the greatest. He really, really has. And it's hurting me right now, Crackity. It's hurt. Like, please. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, we're Once back again, here again. in the trade again. Are you kidding Blade? me? How? How, How oh, has I... he been allowed to get here again? There were two layers of stone walls there. Was is the key. Well, well there was one, in fairness, Crackity. <laughs> True. The other one was blocked by a palisade wall. <laughs> oh, my. Man, and, and it's like all that effort that Blade just put in. The final opportunity you'll get to, to have that effort because now you have to do with stone walls. And yet it's mirrored by these annoying Donzos on the other side. Oh, there you go. There's the money laundering again. He's sending the resources back. <laughs> See, we it really is happening here. They're washing cash. Yeah, behind that, look at that. Yui, he's queued 10 more scholars right now in order to get like research in quickly. I mean, you have to. It's just so slow otherwise. Yeah, but with 20 scholars, that means that like Imperial Age techs only take a minute instead of a minute and a half for other sims to research. Oh, actually, wall has been broken there. Oh, How? What even broke that? See. And Keshix in Trebs. once again. I think it was the Trebs coming from Wham. And that's a huge raid as well. The idle time alone. Louis was setting up full-fledged farms. It's going to be set back. Yeah, Wham's getting a lot of damage in here, not just on the villagers, but also on the trade. But the uh, line of the entire army is chasing a single Keshik to the north. Oh, here come the elephants. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, like, no, we don't want this fight. Let's get back uh, yes, inside. Maybe. Yes, maybe. No, maybe. Uh, 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 maybe. Yes. Maybe. Yes. Maybe. No. Yeah, okay. eat them, boys. Eat them. Can you decide if you're attacking or not, please? <laughs> this is like edging on a high level right now. That's true. And the worst part is like that siege has been getting free access. I think Yui can finally eat. And also being eaten in the meantime is Blade's Mass Keshex. There's still a group of them in the center at the back, but all these other flankers have been cleaned up. 17 elephants on the field right more, now. More, more, more. That's a hand cannon elephant. No, that's not. A, uh, where's the hand cannon elephant? There must be a hand cannon elephant somewhere. They're not crossbow tower elephants yet either. For Ganesh. All for there Ganesh. Is. Come on. Blood there's for Ganesh. The, there's the tower elephant with the hand cannons on top of it. 32 what? damage two <laughs> times every time it attacks. Blood for the elephant god. Skulls for the elephant throne. I'll take nothing less. <laughs> I don't think they will either. I mean, what is your answer to this? Has to be mass spearmen, but... There's not a lot of Donzos being made right now. Looks like there's going to be some uh, Musafadi hand cannoneers here coming out now from Wham and hand cannoneers with the uh, Fortress of the Hunt, uh, Hunt of Fort of the Huntress. Hunting of <laughs> Forts, yes, that thing is going to be problematic. And also these cannon placements are unguarded. You also saw that, right? Louis was was flummoxed by that. Wham did not rewall the left flank. He just walked in yeah. for free. The thing is behind that blade, with the traders. With the free stone, with the unlimited stone that he's getting. This is just a small taste of what's to come. A couple of outposts here with the cannon placements. There's going to be like 20 more in the back. Hey, look, trebuchets are actually effective against elephants. <laughs> oh, God, we're here again. The rams, they oh, got in. Oh, no. Where the what is that pathfinding from the Musafadi warriors? They... I... Hey, I saw him here, guys. I saw him here. Oh, where did they go? Yeah, yeah. Radar they lost report there. them in this vicinity. Where could they be? Oh, the elephants trying to get past the wall here. Either that or they're trying to get concussion. Either way, they're getting it. They are going to break through. And all of a sudden, these trebuchets may not be the, the counter you were hoping for. Yeah, now they pull in and... 
I mean, there's still a lot of cannon placements here and there. That's true, but there's also a lot of tower elephants. Yeah. Goodbye, there's also Atalors. a lot of Keshiks, which is the bigger problem. Oh the trade is being intercepted. They have to trade out, and they have to do it fast. Yeah, Yui. this is the push that I need to go for right now. What is going on? Yui, he has already 20 <laughs> solar, so and he's got 20 more in queue. When is, what are you when doing is, with all the scholars? When do you say stop? I, I, I'm I I'm lost at this point. Like, I don't know why you'd want 20 scholars. Even if you were thinking of healing, this is absurd. Stop. It's full. You filled up a, a university with scholars. Maybe it's just, done. It's over. Does he just follow the, the Donzos and seal them up? Can you seal your allies? Yes, you can. Okay. Maybe, maybe that's the plan. We, we said Yui was playing the eco, and, and Louis is meant to be the military, and that might be why. One scholar for every infantry unit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just run along, wave up, and they can keep up, by the way. 1.5 movement speed on those scholars. This is an army wipe, by the way. Like, I, Wham's going to lose everything at this rate. It's either there's a couple of hand cannons in there. That's true. And they deal a lot of damage. I'm not convinced there's enough of them, though. Especially yeah, with the war eight. elephants tanking like this. <laughs> Where are the Keshiks oh, going? I'm popping out. I'm popping out immediately. Oh my. I think Ke I think those Keshiks were clicked on the wrong war elephant. They just got killed and they didn't attack once. Oh god, yeah, oh, they no. got double threaded there. And well, what does Yui say? He says, okay, the, the guns are a little bit annoying. Let's just get rid of the trade. That should stop you getting more guns. Because of course, more the natural elephants. predator of the elephants is the gun. <laughs> I love the formation shuffle. It's so stupid to watch them just speed up all of a sudden. Like an old lady who knows she's going to be late for bingo. And the hand cannon is just running past them or running after the elephants. Now he does have some sofas out and he did get the upgrade. So the sofas buff the movement speed of uh, the infantry by 15%. I'm sorry, but I can't, I've got... Like when, when you are being <laughs> flanked on multiple areas, when you're being outmaneuvered by elephants, something has gone cruelly wrong in the game. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. <laughs> Wham! That's I mean, maybe so they villages. finish off the... Maybe they finish off the stone mine before the whole the villagers die. Still going to be a lot dead at this rate. Keshik see an opportunity. They will be able to get on top of the elephants, and I think that is at least 10 villagers dead, if not 15. Yeah, rest of the villagers do manage to make it to safety, though. Lots of rams there, opening up another hole in the wall. Nope, never mind. Yep, maybe not. Yeah, there you go. Elephant's going to regroup. And this is about to turn against them. Even with the gunners, I mean, this many Donzos is a, a cushion. It's impossible to get and, through easily. Yeah, it's a lot. But we're also getting a lot of hand cannons right now. Almost 30 mm -hmm. hand cannons, Musafari hand cannons. If he stealths them up once, they get plus 32 damage on their next attack. Which is vulgar against elephants, of course. A quick way of blitzing through the front line. It would be like watching one of those... 18th century movies. The hold, hold, fire, and everything just flops. Oh, they're just gonna switch from one opening to the other. Yeah, but the cruel tie is this. Some elephants there. So, True, the so cruel tie with the hand cannon is a lot. Still 32, and then it adds on at the end, right? So, Jesus, I don't want to. No, don't do the maths. Don't. It'll hurt. Like, they have what, 42 base? That'd be three digits, almost. And this clash, oh my god, this is the worst way they could be taking it right now. We've got Gunners coming out now for Blade as well. But yeah. Frontline's not going to last long. Is... Look at the we'll Scholars! To all the Dunzos, but there we go. It's the they Scholars! Are, he are they healing anything? They're trying! <laughs> but with so many hand cannons, they can pretty much one-shot the Elephants, right? Maybe. Truly. But I don't think he's got enough numbers anymore. I, Wham does, but Blade doesn't look like he does. The Coral Tiger got taken down as well. Okay, that's significant here. That's going to be no sustain. There's going to be no extra bonus damage. Also, in the meantime, Blade's army is going to be cleaved down by the remaining elephants. There's just... Is that still 20 scholars? I it's 31. Notice. It's 31 scholars out they were on the field right now. He was prepping for this. We, we talked about it. We mocked it a little bit, but it's 20 on the front line. A few has got some tech still being researched at home somehow. Wham is going to get the backstab now, but without the assistance of Blade's army, I can't help but feel that you're going to take a heavy dent too. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, but now, the elephants. You need to backstep. Against the hand cannons. You need to backstep right now. That's melee from elephants. Oh god. Oh god. Not just the crossbow attacks, but also tusk attack. It's going to hit those cross uh, those hand cannons. How many did he walk? Like, I feel like that's half his army dead. The scholars are doing everything here. Yeah. 
they do us so much damage here right now. The healing, they, oh my god, the elephant is almost full HP again. Combat healing got nerfed. Ooh, Combat healing got nerfed like two patches ago. What am I watching? Doesn't matter when there is 30 scholars in the front. Just Every heal single it more. one healing. You got a bullet in, your, in, in poor little Dumbo's head. Just heal faster, man. The They're train. monsters. Now They're being unstoppable. As well. That's that's fire yes. line trade. You're not getting them out now. There's no way you're getting them out of your base. Yeah. There's no way. And behind this, Louis also transitioned into hand cannoneers. He's got 22 on the field. He's like, hey, they look pretty Almost good. Almost as many as and still it's divide and conquer. They just keep injecting themselves between the two players from NA. And now, now they reach that key component, the GG territory of every Mongol player. When you are on the pasture farm, you know you've got them by the long and curlies. All right, that's a lot of dead elephants though. Can they eat them too? They might need to. It's feast or famine here. Village is now being targeted. Most of the remaining elephants have oh, been cleaned God. up. Looks like the scholars losing their impact. Hand can hand hand villagers remaining. High. 30 traders have gone down so far. More traders to fall. Even more villagers dying. Everything is dying right now. They only the just eco. got through the elephants. The eco is gone. The eco is gone. And look at the military still behind this. They have 50 more. Now they have a 60 eco lead. How the hell do you come back? There's five more elephants in queue. I'm just like, I'm haunted by the noises of elephants breeding at this stage. This is absurd. Yo, know, poor Blade and Wham, they turned up to play a good old best of five of Age of Empires 4, but not Yui. No, Yui, he, he remembered the good days on Zoo Tycoon. He installed Windows 98 just to play it, and this is the result. Finally, it looks like Blade and Wham are able to push the enemies out of their base, but what is left after this massacre? 50 traders have gone down. They were at over 80. They were close to 90. Now they're at 35. They were at 150 villagers. Now they're at 85. And yet Louis has made his way to the back of the base again. So any remaining traders might also have a slight living problem. Yeah, he seems to be quite comfortable in the back of the base there from Wade. And this gets cleaned up, but the it, damage. It's, it's only getting done. cleaned up because Louis's not even caring. Like, he, he, I think he A clicked and looked away there. Yui is still trading, uh, still sending more resources, by the way. Like, this man has been, sir, sings a lot and sir, dance a lot with these elephants. This is absurd. Armicon still somewhat even right now. Lots of elephants, though. So hard to take down with that meat shield that Louis is providing. Louis, just working on so many different battalions, he's not even immediately responding to each of these engagements. But you know behind this, the premium army's rebuilding. We're now up to 14 tower elephants. <sighs> More elephants? Hold me. Do lose their life. <laughs> the scholars. There's just so many of them. Oh, no, don't worry about the Marlins. There's plenty more where they came from. But the elephants, they're an endangered species, Crackity. We must protect them. them. Loses half HP, back to fault. This is some, some chancy levels of healing right now. I didn't realize we were in the Pokemon world. Whew. Dun, 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 dun. Back you go. Back to battle. Broke a couple bones. Fight for our Now they're fixed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, they, you you know Lou and Yui, they, they know the control they have in this game. They're not even pressured to rush this end. They can just rebuild every time as they are rightly doing. Yeah, I mean, Blade and Wham, they're trying to rebuild the trade now. Oh, that's going to be fun. But it just GGM takes so long and yeah, it's just going to, oh God, yeah, the relics. You pick them up. There he is now. Just... It's, the, it's the right of battle, right? Don't, even, the... don't even bring them back. Pull them forward and try to get some Wallow <laughs> in. What was it, Chronicles of Riddick? You keep what you kill? Oh, well, right now, Wham doesn't get to keep much. He's trying to get through these elephants, but they'll stand their ground. Maganel also now coming in, and this could bait him into his death. Has to back away. The mango chases him. There's relics now accessible, but do you want to pick it up? I mean, I do like healing more than relics at this point. At the same time, Louis pushing Blade back, and yeah, these three relics, I mean, just go for the wool alone. Just one scholar each takes a relic, you just run into the remainder of the economy from your opponent and just you click the wallow. I think you want to watch healing, the surrender. Right, because I think you can't heal while holding the relic. Yeah, but yeah. like 
I need three if, relics and you have 26 colors. What, what I'm seeing here is like if Louis just takes two mangoes and helps Yui, this is over. Right, because then the, the hand cannon in mass that Wham has built up can't fight. He picked them up. I think he just picked Ooh. them up. Those oh, are hand God. cannon ears. Those are hand cannon ears. He hasn't got the trait That's to rebuild so this. <gasps> Last man standing, oh, but not for long. GG gets called. It will be a 3-0 for Louis Yui. A clean sweep. I mean, sweep doesn't quite cover it. I mean, they, they were the janitors in this series, just cleaning up the mess. And sadly, for the NA boys, that's all they can be looked at in this one. Not because they played badly at all, no. But because Yui and Louie, the synchronicity between these two was on another level. Yeah, exactly. And it was, can we just talk about how Louie 1v2'd for so, so long there? Incredible. I, I, what we wonder is like, is you, I genuinely thought that Yui had some sort of package delivery to go sign for at one stage there. That was absurd. I feel like we maybe missed a raid that he went down so many eco units at one stage. Like we knew there was some impact there from Blade. But the fact that they were able to synchronize a recovery amidst all that, the fact that Louis was able to buy so much time on the flank, the fact that he was always able to keep them dancing to his tune, and as you said, 2 the oneing For me, this was the standout performance so far in this tournament. This is where the Grand Volani Corral comes in, right? Because you get a thousand food per minute completely passively. It means we need so many less villagers there. And we can see that with the military graph, Louis sitting at like 125, 130 military units there. That was how he managed to fight 1v2 for so, so long there. Mm -hmm. The man's a monstrosity. And he proves exactly why Fulani Corral should be considered by many a player, especially in these team games. Sure, Farimba, it seems like a beautiful proposition. You've been whooped by it so many times in 1v1s. But once you reach scale, does it really seem worth it anymore? Versus, what was that, an extra thousand passive income? Yeah, and potentially even more with the remaining food upgrades. Like, we looked at it in Castle Age and Imperial Age. It's going to get even better.